the support international cooperation <coughs> international forum brazilian support international cooperation in research and innovation i am one of the foreign correspondents here in brazil and i am honored to uh, present this important international event i am going to introduce our first speakers the members of our first panel but first i'm going to give you the rules of the game for this forum which is being broadcast live uh, in the countries where we can actually do this at the moment because of the technical problems that google has experienced this monday but for all participants i'd like to remind all of you to please keep your microphone muted if you're not speaking and for those uh, watching us i would like to remind you of the possibility of choosing the channel with the simultaneous translation because this forum will be broadcast in portuguese and english and on zoom you can press the interpretation function for those participants and for those of you listening to us on youtube you can also change the channel on youtube going into the english or the portuguese channel let's start our forum then uh, beginning with the presentation of the first panel which will be the opening session for our forum and we're going to start with Professor Odi de Lagostan, who is the president of the National Council of the State Research Support Foundations, CONFAP. And in saying this, I would like to mention that this is a forum organized with CONFAP together with the European Union delegation uh, in Brazil and also the Enrich in Brazil program and also the National Industry Confederation CNI in Brazil. I am going to give Professor O.D. the floor for a few moments, and then I'll introduce the rest of the panel members. So, uh, Mr. President, uh, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. It is a great uh, pleasure to be here welcoming all of you in this international forum organized with CONFAP in collaboration with our international partners. I would like to greet the ambassador of the European Union to Brazil, uh, Ambassador Ibanez, the president of CNPQ, Professor Evaldo Vilela, the FINEP director, Mr. André Gudoy, and Ambassador Achilles, also uh, in attendance here with us today and is part of our opening panel the importance of international cooperation does not need to be highlighted here in any way because i believe that this is a consensus that this is very much important actions for all countries because when there is international cooperation we have better quality research we have bigger impact as far as the research that we conduct and we have a much higher rate of return and confab has been working for a long time in increasing international cooperation and here we have our former president who will have the opportunity also to uh, give us a few comments and i'm gonna uh, call upon them on the order of time and these are former presidents who worked very hard in order to establish these international corporations so these are my opening remarks i would like to welcome all of you and wish everyone a fruitful forum thank you very much thank you mr president i'm also going to introduce the opening uh, session of our forum remembering that the forum has the goal of presenting partnership and cooperation program for research together with support from the state and federal research support foundations uh, in Brazil. And we have uh, Ambassador Inácio Imbanez, who is the European Union Ambassador in Brazil. Welcome, sir. We also have the President of Valdo Vilela, who is the President of the National Council for Scientific and Technological Development, CNPQ. Welcome, both of you. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Ambassador, Director of the uh, Technology Promotion 
uh, department from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Brazil, Mr. Achilles Zalua, and also Mr. André Godoy, who is director of FINEP, FINEP, which is a project in studies financier. So I'd now like to give the floor to Ambassador, to President Evaldo Vilela, and not the Ambassador. Ambassador, dia, in todos. a second. É uma, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, aos europeus. Well, good afternoon é to those of you who are watching from Europe. It is really a great honor to be here representing CNPQ, CNPQ that has a long lasting tradition in international cooperation, particularly é, when we de, de, de are going é, through such difficult days. Fica muito claro para todos but it nós is very clear for all of us that cooperation collaboration has become paramount, and this is why we're here. I'd like to congratulate Confab for this event, our president and dear, with all the work that they've been doing, that he's been doing so with Confab, particularly with the international cooperation, which is, again, paramount. I'd also like to... Uh, Say my greetings to Mario Neto, Marjone, Saíra, who were president of CONFAP, and with them we reached a very important level in international cooperation. There was a possibility of doing this, and they did so very well, and today, me as well as OD, we are reaping results of this very good work done by them in the past, and I'd like to also congratulate Elisa here, who is always helping us, because this is by no means an easy task. Brazil does have some difficulties, institutionally speaking, for example, in order for us to be able to engage in such cooperation and confab, has found the path to reach this. And it is really very, very good. And I'd like to thank our ambassador, Mbanyas, who uh, heads this uh, European Union delegation here in Brazil. He's a very important ambassador for us here in Brazil for international cooperation in science, technology, and innovation. I also would like to uh, greet uh, Ambassador Achilles from the Brazilian Foreign Affairs Ministry, who always helps us a lot and has been very much present in assisting us in these tasks. And this is very important because science and technology, once globalized, will be able to make the most of the innovation process. Why? Because the most important innovation comes from technology, from science, from knowledge. And working in Brazil, we've actually done a lot of things, but we need to change this level. And nothing better than being together with the European Union, promoting innovation in Europe and in Brazil and Latin America, generally speaking. So we are on the right path, having to get ready, because next year uh, will be more difficult than this year. I don't want to be a pessimist, but I am always a hopeful pessimist. We always hope that next year will be better, but we need to be real, and there will not be easy resources for us in 2021. I mean, we've never had easy resources, but without a doubt, 2021 will pose even greater challenges for us. And this is no reason for us to stop our cooperation by any means, because we need to find mechanisms to be able to engage in collaboration, cooperation in an effective manner, despite having few possibilities for such. I would like to um, great all the research support foundations. This relation is very important. You know, CONFAP, CNPQ, and European Union. It is a link. It is a tie, really, that we need to uh, celebrate and have the responsibility of taking forward with the CNPQ. I had some more specific uh, notes of how much we have collaborated, but uh, unfortunately today 
We've had our offices shut because of COVID cases uh, that were identified there, so we're all at home. So my presentation was left in my office's computer. So I could have tried to have access to it, but I didn't have enough time to work around this problem. But I'd like to leave with all of you a word of uh, encouragement, commitment for this corporation. I'd like to thank Confap and all the others who have cooperated with us, particularly in the European Union. Thank you all very much, and I wish you all a very fruitful day. Thank you very much, President Vilela. Now give the floor to Ambassador Achille Zaloa from the Brazilian Foreign Affairs Ministry. You have the floor, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Odida Lagoshin, Dr. Vilela from CNPQ, Godoy, FINEP Director, uh, my colleague, Inacio Banes. I'm going to speak a little bit in English, perhaps to talk to our colleagues who are listening to us in Europe. Brazilian system for science, technology, and innovation is not uh, that dissimilar, probably from from what happens in the European Union, because there you had you have uh, what, the equivalent to the federal level, right, to the federal government, and you also have the national states. And in Brazil, you have the states of the federation with their uh, 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 foundations, uh, research foundations, which are very important actors. And the important thing is that everybody uh, works as a team. Everybody knows what everybody else is doing, both uh, on, on, on our side, the Brazilian side, on the European side. And uh, I think that's the spirit that, uh, that, that prevails. And uh, the partnership uh, with CONFAP has been uh, 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 very important for the federal government. And uh, uh, you know, it's the same uh, Brazilian science and technology team that, uh, that, that partners with the European uh, team. Uh, I would like uh, to, to just to, to make a, a little marketing for, for, for what we do at the foreign ministry. Don't forget that the Innovation Diplomacy Program, Programa Diplomacia da Inovação, PDI, uh, is available as a partner to organize events uh, in Europe to, 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 to help uh, make Brazilian research better known uh, in, the, in the European countries. Uh, uh, we just have to, to, to organize the partnership. It's a small program, but uh, uh, I believe that with little money, we can do a lot. Uh, of course, it's better to have uh, more money. I, I'm not against that. On the contrary, uh, I think we, we, we need, certainly need more. And many of the people present here today are warriors. Uh, to bring the necessary resources for, for, for Brazilian research. Uh, but uh, the most important resource on science, technology, innovation is the one that we have between the right ear and the left ear. And uh, the second one is communication. Uh, so by building bridges between Brazilian and European researchers, uh, even if it's a Zoom bridge, uh, we are already pushing, uh, uh, pushing it forward. And then comes the, 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 the rest, the big projects, the big uh, uh, the, the research infrastructure, uh, the scholarships. Uh, you know, uh, bo both, uh, both our, our, our colleagues at the European Union and our colleagues at CONFAP, CNPq, FINEP, the funding agencies, uh, uh, the Ministry for Science, Technology and Innovation, the Ministry for Communication, all the ministries in Brazil that, have, uh, uh, that are active in, in innovation. Uh, uh, please continue counting on us. 
uh, to the foreign ministry at DCT uh, to help build these bridges. The, the, the embassies and missions that you have in Europe are not missions by, uh, are not Itamaraty's missions, they are Brazil missions. Uh, they, they, they belong to the Ministry for Science and Technology and Innovation, the Ministry of Communications, the, the, the funding agencies, the, the, the state uh, uh, FAPs, the state agencies, uh, uh, we are all part of the same Brazilian team, and we are not playing against the European team, we are playing with them uh, for, to, to, to push forward the, the frontiers of knowledge and uh, 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 bring uh, whatever we find there uh, to the benefit of our societies. Thank you very much, and uh, let's hope uh, this meeting is great, to, uh, works to bring uh, Brazil and Europe uh, even closer. Thank you. Muito obrigado, embaixador. Então, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. I now give the floor to Director André Godoy. The floor is yours, sir. Bom dia a todos. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, our Brazilian colleagues. Brazilian to our European. Actually, good afternoon to our European colleagues. I'd like to uh, especially greet Professor D. President of CONFAP, Ambassador Inácio Ibanez, Professor Vado Vileira, President of CMPQ, and Ambassador Achilles. And I am going to talk in English a little bit to establish this a communication with our European colleague. Godoy, Director of FINEP. Uh, and on behalf of our President General Valdemar Barroso, I'd like to greet my Brazilian colleagues and authorities. I'm glad to be here and say that Europe is one of the, our most important traditional partners. It's really important. Uh, we have been working together for many years in different areas. And it's based, of course, in, in commitment and mutual trust. That, that happened for these this years. Huh? So far we have launched seven bilateral joint calls in the recent past. As a result of six of them, we have 10 ongoing projects in aeronautics, iron gas, IT, energy efficiency, in many countries as like Sweden, Norway, Spain specifically. The seventh one in bioeconomy is open for receiving proposals until March 19. Uh, next, for next year. It's a broad partnership among FINEP, Ministry of Science and Technology of Agriculture, and our German partners, FNR and FZJ. Regarding the multilateral partnership, we have been also taking part in many European initiatives. We made a joint call with the Eureka Global Stars and participate in two RMN2 consortia will be part of Aramin 3 as well. The administrative arrangement with the European Union and our Brazilian partners, CONFAP and CNPQ, was signed in 2018. Even in difficult times, as Professor Aval said, it have already tangible results, like the sector dialogues in early May and the term identification of Brazilian and European projects that present a remarkable potential for twinning activities. We have been reaching positive results in our bilateral and multilateral cooperation, but in order to foster and enhance our activities within the administrative arrangement, it's extremely important that the New Horizon European program has a specific action for international cooperation in Brazil and or Latin America. That's, a, 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 that's important, so it, it, it's a message. Thus the planning and activities could be jointly done by the two sides according to the guidelines of the new administrative arrangements to be signed by DG, DGPI and FINEP, CONFAP and CNPQ. That's a message as I think FINEP and, our, and Brazil has a long, uh, in traditional partnership with European institutes and institutions. So we would really would like, to, like to, to, to go ahead with the, these partnerships. 
I would like to thank you and wish a very productive meeting to speakers and audience. Good morning and good afternoon. Muito obrigado, Dr. Godoy. Então, para um, uh... Thank you very much, Dr. Godoy. And now to close uh, this opening panel or this opening session, I'd like to invite Ambassador Ignacio Ibanez. Uh, please, Ambassador, the floor is yours. Bom dia, Brazil. Good afternoon, uh, Europe. Good morning, Brazil. It's a great pleasure to participate in another forum promoted by It's a great pleasure to be here in another forum that is promoted by CONFAP, which is a very important partner for the European Union. And I'd like to uh, extend my greetings in particular to uh, the chairman of CONFAP, uh, Dr. D'Agostin. And I'd like to também, also extend these compliments to Lois, all former chair people of CONFAP. And uh, I'd also like to greet my colleague, uh, Ambassador from the Brazilian Foreign Ministry, who has always been a major supporter of all these initiatives that we are sharing here today with you. And I'd like also to greet the chairman of CNPQ, Dr. Vilela, and the director of FINEPI, uh, Dr. Godoy. I'd also like to extend my greetings to Laura Maragna, Elisa Matola. Without them, this event wouldn't have been possible. I'd like to highlight the support that the Enrich project has been giving to our initiatives. For example, this forum that we're having today and also all the different podcasts that we have been having and to which I've been able to contribute together with the chair people of CNPQ and CONFAP. And this is a very successful initiative that has uh, been uh, supporting many of the key uh, areas in our cooperation. It is a major pleasure for me to have uh, the presence of uh, so many representatives from European Research Councils and also uh, representatives from uh, Iraq and other important initiatives uh, aimed at supporting a cooperation in the world and together with uh, member states uh, in the European Union Union, such as by diverse, for example, and uh, uh, also uh, on a multilateral uh, forum. We have several representatives here that have been working together with us in promoting cooperation in the area of science and innovation. And I'd like to uh, also mention this project that supports uh, cooperation in marine research over the Atlantic and uh, also uh, the research they've been doing in the area of uh, research infrastructure with the support of CNPQ that has been providing uh, significant support in our collaboration arrangements. I'd like to also highlight the support that uh, uh, we've been having from CONFAP and also uh, all the other uh, Brazilian uh, research support uh, foundations, uh, including uh, the uh, 2020 horizon, which uh, uh, is a call that will uh, end now in January 2021. And this is actually a relationship in research and innovation that is uh, very well consolidated, and it goes beyond a very positive perspective of deepening our collaboration under the future project uh, Horizon Europe that's starting in 2021. So all these initiatives, both present and future, will also be discussed uh, under our joint uh, committee, which will also address uh, our cooperation in research agreement that is uh, uh, to take place in March next year. So despite the pandemic, our collaboration has continued in a very active manner, and this is what uh, has to happen in such uh, challenging times. And this is what happened, actually. We've deepened our collaboration in our search uh, for uh, answers and responses to deal with the pandemic. And this is what happens uh, when we work together with CONFAP considering all this regional diversity that Brazil has to offer, and uh, it's represented here in all these different um, research um, support foundations. We know that each uh, region in Brazil has their own peculiarities, but we're all willing to strengthen our cooperation 
e no benefício uh, and this cooperation mutual. that has always been Muito based obrigado. in Eu mutual uh, trust and mutual benefits i'm also very optimistic about prospects for our collaboration thank you very much thank you ambassador and uh, with that we can end the opening session and start the first panel and i'd like to invite professor uh, Ode so that we can invite uh, all uh, previous uh, chairs to take a photograph together yes before we do that i'd like to uh, perhaps uh, uh, break protocol a little bit and i'd like to uh, highlight the work carried out by previous chairs of confab and i'd like to give them a chance to say you know, like very briefly perhaps just a minute saying uh, the, uh to talk about their views uh, on the importance of the work that we started in the past that we're still carrying on today so i'd like to invite our oldest uh, uh chair here and then i'd like to invite all the Bom others to say a few words as well morning. Well, obrigado, professor Edir. good morning, Parabéns everyone. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, uh, and and thank you very much, CONFAP, for this initiative. I'd like to uh, just uh, greet everyone. I won't talk very much and I won't name everyone because we don't have much time. And I'd like to extend uh, my greeting to everyone uh, in the person of Professor Ode. And I'd like to, in this one minute that I have uh, available for me, I'd like to highlight the importance of the international relationship that CONFAP has developed with the rest of the world. And so since uh, 2009, 2010, when I was uh, uh, chairing a CONFAP, we have developed a wide avenue of cooperation with the European Union. We visited Europe and we actually worked and spoke directly with all the different partners that are here today and we convinced them that together we are stronger. And under this uh, umbrella understanding, we've been developing all these international partnerships that are so important. And I wish you all great success uh, and lots of like to greet my successors because it's important to mention them that because they helped us to uh, maintain this very important alliance between Brazil and its international partners, in particular the EU. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Prof Professor Odi, and uh, I wish you a very successful event. Thank you, Professor Neto. Now, Professor Sergio Gardioni. Well, Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. And similarly, uh, because we don't have much time, I will extend my collective greetings uh, to all of you, uh, both uh, the current chair and also the previous chairs of uh, CONFAP, in particular you, uh, Chairman Odir. Uh, our role uh, was actually to maintain and provide continuity to what Professor Mario had started. And uh, after he left uh, the presidency of CONFAP and I took over, he uh, voluntarily agreed to lead on international cooperation. And this is uh, an ongoing process. It's an evolving uh, process. And we've been very uh, fortunate to be able to work together with people with a very profound vision and very willing to, to work together with us, in particular in the European Union and also in the United Kingdom. And, uh, and that's how we managed to develop so much cooperation, both at national and regional level. And we've also been strongly supported by uh, more, let's say, traditional uh, organizations such as FAPESP, FAPERGIS, uh, FAPERGI, a number of important organizations in Brazil that have made uh, significant efforts to make sure that their work could be extended to all different foundations in Brazil that work in the area of cooperation in science and innovation. And they have all contributed to the success of this initiative. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for this invitation. And uh, I am very glad to see how strong this cooperation is. Uh, for uh, such uh, an important initiative as uh, our mm, the president of uh, CNPQ said earlier, who was also a former uh, chairman of CONFAP. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. Well, now I'd like to uh, invite Professor Zaira Turki to say a few words. Uh, dear uh, 
friends and partners, it's a great pleasure for me to be here in this event. I'd like to extend my greetings to all authorities present here today, all our friends, uh, presidents of different foundations and all uh, representatives from the European Union. And it's a great pleasure for me to be here to see how far our comprehension uh, has gone with such uh, positive results. And I'm sure that we can uh, move uh, uh, even uh, further uh, into the future. And I'm very happy to have been able to uh, take part in this very successful uh, story of international cooperation uh, between CONFAP and, in, and uh, international partners. And it's like this, you know, through these very strong partnerships and this wish to move forward with our understanding that science has to be addressed at the international level. So thank you very much, Professor. Oh dear. And thank you very much to all my friends and to my predecessors as well, who gave me the opportunity to uh, uh, offer my contribution to such important trajectory trajectory in international cooperation between CONFAP and uh, federal organizations, including uh, uh, FINEPI and CNPQ and now international partners, in particular, the European Union. Thank you very much. And I wish you a great event. Thank you. Well, thank you, Professor Zaira. As you have been able to see, this is something that we built together with uh, the participation of very competent, a very competent team. And what we do is that we are trying to maintain and build on what was uh, started in the past. Professor uh, Vilela, uh, uh, who is now the chairman of CNPQ, he also was one of our chair people at CONFAPI. And now I've I'm having the opportunity to move forward with this work that was started by, by my predecessor. And I'd like to invite everyone who's taking part in this uh, opening session to uh, join me for an official uh, picture. So we're all here together uh, on the screen and uh, we are taking a photograph together. Yes. And now that we've taken this group picture, uh, I think we can move on with the event now. So uh, I'd like to now invite you to start this first forum or this first panel in this forum, which uh, addresses international cooperation. And we are running a bit late because of all the international uh, issues, uh, sorry, because of all the technical issues that we had this morning. But uh, we will try uh, to maintain uh, the time allotted to each uh, participant, which is about five minutes each, and reminding everyone that uh, uh, I'd like to remind everyone to, to please keep your microphone muted unless you are speaking at that time. And I'd like to start uh, inviting uh, Mr. Felipe Casapo, who is the president of the Enriching Brazil Association. And I'd like to invite him now to say, uh, to present his re remarks. Well, uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm trying to turn my camera on. Yes, now here I am. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, well, good afternoon for those who are listening from Europe. I'd like to uh, 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 to greet in particular uh, Ambassador Ignacio Ibanez and also uh, the chairman of CONFAP, Odi uh, de Lagostin, uh, Professor Godoy as well, and Professor Evaldo Villela from CNPQ, and also extend my greetings to all participants here. It's a great honor to be here uh, with you today because it's a very special moment. And as many have said before me, we have been able to prove that together we are stronger and we can develop science, technology and innovation together and thus uh, uh, meet and respond to these uh, great challenges of the 21st century, because these are global challenges and they're linked to sustainability and the well-being of society. And this can be done through science, research and innovation and technology, of course. And this is the only way that we can actually address these challenges. And 
Uh, Enrich in Brazil is an innovation center that was uh, created under this uh, Horizon 2020 program to bring uh, us closer together and to intensify our relationships, but also to simplify partnership between the European Union and Brazil. Enriching Brazil, therefore, is part of a group of uh, global uh, centers, uh, which is called Enrich Global. And uh, this network uh, has the same objectives uh, as uh, Enrich in Brazil. Basically, it's a, a global network of cooperation between the European Union and a number of different countries that are powerhouses in terms of uh, science, technology and innovation. And uh, Brazil has a lot to offer in terms of, for example, bioeconomy, but also in digital change fintechs and renewable energies and uh, a number of uh, live uh, science technologies that will enable us to uh, create a more balanced world for the 21st century. So Enriching Brazil is a consortium that brings together representatives from the EU and from Brazil. And the Brazilian uh, members of this consortium in, uh, are CONFAP, Unicamp, and uh, uh, CNI, which is a national uh, industry confederation. And from the EU side, we have several high level partners that represent, uh, 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 let's say, the state of the art of innovation, such as, for example, the German uh, Development uh, and Cooperation Agency and the Belgian uh, Cooperation Agency, I ISPI and IASP, which is International Center, uh, that is located in Malaga in Spain, and also the Austrian uh, Research Technology and Innovation Agency, and the Hungarian uh, Research uh, Organization as well, and the Turkish uh, Organization as well. So it's a very uh, important consortium that represents the whole of Europe. And the goal is to facilitate and support everyone that actually uh, wants to take part and wants to encourage this partnership between the European Union and Brazil and make sure that this partnership is stronger and it's uh, deeper. And that's how that's why Brazil provides uh, executive uh, education and uh, with the objective of highlighting the tools that we have available to develop this partnership but also a number of matchmaking solutions bringing together these networks considering uh, supply and demand but also research and innovation also to uh, support in the area of accessing financial resources and capital for the development of innovation projects uh, in partnership and finally enriching brazil has its uh, soft learning herbs which uh, are focused on uh, attracting uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, European uh, entrepreneurs who want to visit Brazil or want to know more about Brazil and Brazilian entrepreneurs who want to know more about uh, Europe. So we provide all this support and those that are selected can go through an acceleration program so that we can uh, make that insertion and that relationship more agile and more fruitful both uh, in both directions actually Brazilians in Europe and Europeans in Brazil and this is what I wanted to say about enriching Brazil and I'd like to say once again it's a great pleasure for me to be here it's been a great honor to have been invited to join you here today and like to congratulate you once again for this initiative and for this great work that you've been uh, doing that we have been doing together and I'd like to say that enrich in Brazil is here to support you, to serve you, and to simplify this relationship and this promotion of science, technology, and innovation between the European Union and Brazil. Well, thank you again, and I wish you all a very fruitful uh, day of work. Thank you. Muito obrigado, Presidente. E antes de passar, então, a palavra. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I'd like to, uh, just before uh, I uh, uh, hand over the floor to the next uh, participants, I'd like to invite uh, President Odi to say a few words about this call for partnership with the European Union, and then we'll move on with the next presentation. Well, thank you.
In this session, we will uh, highlight cooperation with the EU, and there's a number of uh, cooperation uh, projects going on. And they started, actually, uh, many of them started in 2014, 2015, and there are a number of projects that have been supported by us, jointly supported by us, and we started a number of different programs that are being uh, kept uh, a long time, and we want to strengthen uh, these partnerships and maintain them. I won't mention all these programs here because we do not have much time available, but uh, I'd like to uh, invite everyone. Let's, let's continue with the presentation so that we can have a wider understanding of the magnitude of this cooperation and all the different opportunities that are made available to us via these partnerships and these uh, opportunities are made available to all our uh, research support foundations at state level as well i'd like to also to mention uh, the contribution that was uh, given to us by our former uh, chairman fabio gedges and he cannot uh, attend this event he's not here with us today because he's recovering from uh, covid 19 but it's very important to highlight the work that he developed over uh, the past year since uh, I took uh, office in uh, late September. So I'd like to uh, acknowledge the very important work of Professor, Professor Fabio Gedis uh, for uh, COFAP's international cooperation initiatives. So I'd like to uh, um, hand the floor over to you so that we continue with uh, the next presentation. From the European expert, Dr. Reach of the Enrich in Brazil and CONFAP, he is going to address the tools for the relationships between Brazil and the uh, European Unit, perspective for sustainability. And you have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. <clears throat> thank you to CONFAP, to Enrich Brazil, to give me an opportunity to provide you in five minutes um, a very short overview of the study what we conducted uh, regarding the scenarios that we uh, identify from the post-COVID-19 between the EU-Brazil cooperation. In particular, one of the key aspects that we, we made uh, uh, specifically is to identify the political, the economic and social technologies of the impact of the COVID. And from us, it was extremely relevant to identify in Europe if there is a, an integrated uh, policy uh, related to, to the pandemic. Uh, what uh, it was very in interesting specifically is the, the fact of the technologies has been quite uh, impressive in terms of the support. I'm not talking only the European Investment Bank uh, supporting the top 22 European com uh, company on the COVID-19 but I'm talking about specifically of the of the horizon Europe uh, how we be designed in uh, with the provision of uh, last week of the budget uh, in view of the horizon 2020 project has been financed I think one of the important aspects apart of the impact uh, uh, between political economy social and technology is to provide you specifically which are the most relevant uh, impact uh, of the European policy to the COVID-19. This is a, a part of the study. We, we identified that uh, one of the key aspects uh, was extremely relevant is to the governance issues has been already said before, the cooperation between the member states level, but also the local authorities. So considering a European level, one of the important aspects was also focusing on uh, local regional authority to the new industrial strategy, but how we can also link with a new program like Erasmus Plus and the future uh, transformation of the digital inclusion will be important uh, in, in this case. What we've done, uh, and I think uh, I want to just to give an overview very shortly, in three member states, of course, I take also the consideration of the UK, is the fact that the, the approach in the COVID-19, in particular in terms of uh, technology solution, it was completely different. If you see the Germans, they uh, they done an interesting uh, approach about the startup through a co-funding investment. 
the, the Spanish uh, government in terms of the COVID-19, it was a very specific in some specific sectors, including automotive industry. The Italian government uh, uh, has been uh, quite involved at regional level, because at the regional and national level will be extremely important to see these uh, initiative in particular for the guarantee of the SMEs and also the implication in the UK from uh, specifically of the small business grant uh, in terms of the supporting of the COVID-19, specifically for the business design model for the COVID-19. What we done in this study was quite interesting. We also took the regional dimension specifically in, in Germany, Bavaria, in, in, in Spain, the Basque country, in Emilia-Romagna, Emilia-Romagna, and in the UK, Scotland. And uh, this is also an interesting point that we be made some uh, interesting uh, response uh, of, of these studies. Uh, one of the important aspects I would like to uh, draw attention about these uh, foresight studies is to see specifically the best case scenarios in the world case scenarios of the pandemic, in particular, if we talk about the green Europe, how the implication of the economic activity will be recovering on the after the post lockdown. And there will be also important issues of, about procurement, legislation, there will be also an important aspect for specifically the, the European Green Deal, which is I'm not talking today, but the, the, my colleague will be specifically focusing on the European uh, recovery plan, how we'll be also by 2023 uh, specifically focusing on, on these areas. We need to also take in consideration there is an issue which is uh, related to the tax reform, the subsidies uh, uh, specifically in, in, in these areas. Uh, the other important aspect I would like to mention is the implication of the circular economy, which is through the measure of cooperation and stakeholder engagement of the transformation of the industrial sectors are uh, extremely important. So now there are some specific uh, collaboration with China, with Africa, and of course, will be also interesting to see a future collaboration in the circular economy with Brazil. When we also uh, identify the, one of the key aspects uh, is the European Innovation Council has been dedicating financing equity investment of acceleration program of startup that will be also realized as some green package innovation and in the global market. The role of the regions we already mentioned it was extremely important to, to take uh, the different uh, diversity of the strategy for the complementarity to have the new implication of these studies. In terms of the work case scenarios, if we are considering the results of the financial measure, specifically on the, on the area of the corona pandemic, we need to take in consideration the, the financial sectors. This is also an important aspect that we are considering, but also the strong competition of China and Russia will be encourage initiative, including some product that will be declined support of the tax reform and the low cost uh, technology will be also an important aspect uh, in some circular economy intensive sector like textile, construction, electronic uh, plastics. So uh, we would like to make in these studies a specific recommendation that we want to put on the table today. And I think this is uh, extremely important uh, specifically on these studies especially for the new merging research. So Brazilians should be taking advantage of this uh, extremely important initiative of the European Union recovery plan of the European Green Deal. And in particular, which are the new priority of research and development and innovation in Horizon Europe, specifically focusing on uh, uh, electric vehicles, sustainable energy, food for the future, smart environment, integrated urban transport. The reshaping the cooperation program, which is a new innovative program and continuity initiative like uh, in Cobra, Sebra Peak and uh, Enrich are extremely important. And in particular, one of the key aspects is to be very well prepared in account of the some economic crisis between European countries. So that will be also extremely important for the uh, innovative uh, and uh, very uh, attracting uh, from the Brazil 
uh, European funding for this uh, uh, aspect. So considering uh, uh, what we are identifying in these studies, the uh, EU Brazil research and innovation policy must be transformative, innovation, governance, social, there will be need to be change in science and technology innovation in particular with the society. The role of the European Research Council, which we will be presenting later on, will be also extremely important to develop an internationalization strategy, specifically to attract uh, in Brazil new professional careers from the European. The role of the mechanism of the smart specialization strategy. And uh, uh, finally, one of the key words that was mentioned already is the increase in this uh, collaboration of science and innovation uh, diplomacy. That could be an influential instrument specifically from EU external policies in some of the countries and regions. You can see the European Green Deal with, for instance, in energy science uh, policy with Africa, it was a uh, very effective. So this could be an important task that we should be taking consideration. Uh, thanks again for the five minutes. I know it's a very short limited time, but if you want to read carefully the report uh, what we have done so far. This is uh, uh, will be public uh, from the Enrich and for the CONFAP. And uh, I have uh, on your disposal any question if you would like to know more about these uh, foresight uh, scenarios that we identify in very, very short time because the work has been done in the less than two months. And I would like to thank again uh, uh, Enrich and CONFAP for this contribution. Carlos, o microfone está fechado. Peço desculpas. Então, muito obrigado. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Leonardo. We will now go into our panel. We will now have the scientific director of the ERC. He's going to talk about cooperation with the European Research Council. So, Mr. Nascenti, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Carlo. I will share my slide with you. Um, good morning and good afternoon as well uh, from Brussels, everybody. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer uh, for this opportunity to present uh, this uh, European Research Council uh, program, fostering international cooperation. And in particular, at DRC CONFAP CNPQ implementing arrangements. Um, this program, promotes opportunity for scientists to visit and collaborate uh, with DRC research teams, partially supported by non-European agencies. But I will briefly present you some numbers about the implementing arrangements. Uh, this year, two new international agreements have been signed with Japan and India, uh, thus reaching a total of 16 implementing arrangements uh, signed with funding agencies from 12 different countries. In terms of results, more than 450 international researchers visited an ERC project since 2012. And every year we launch an internal call for expression of interest to ask our principal investigator for their ability to temporarily host uh, international researchers. And as well, Brazilian National Council uh, of the State Funding Agency, the CONFAP, and the National Council for Science Scientific and Technological Development, the CNPQ, launched a call for expression of interest last October, uh, dedicated to PhD researcher funded by Brazilian research institution to join ERC teams. 17 FAPs already joined uh, the call and other can still join the call in the, in the future. Uh, but I will provide you more information later uh, at the end of this presentation. How does it work? Uh, I will quickly guide you through the, the process. Every, every year we launch an internal call for expression of interest, contacting all eligible ERC principal investigators. Principal investigators as one month to express their interest uh, to participate. After the call is closed, we send the list of all interested uh, principal investigators to third countries, funding agencies like, like CONFAP and CMPQ. And at this stage, the ball is within the third country-based funding agency. 
and researchers as well. Uh, the agencies will launch their own internal calls as CONFAP and CMPQ just did. And they will inform all eligible researchers that the, uh, as applicants have to contact ERC principal investigators to seek an agreement on possible research visits. ERC PIs then will accept or not the visit. Uh, if, as, if it's accepted, the, 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 the ERC principal investigator and source institution will provide letters of support. Uh, and then the third country based funding agency will evaluate uh, the proposals and funds the successful one. Finally, the visiting scientists uh, will plan and ex execute the research visits in agreement with the principal investigators. Um, there are also very few participation process and conditions common to all the agreements. Uh, the most important one are that ERC does not intervene in the communication between the PIs and potential visitors or in the selection of the visiting scientists. Um, it is expected that collaboration will occur in similar areas of scientific pursuit, of course, and the visiting researchers may be incorporated uh, into the ERC teams, uh, which is an important aspect. So I just present you the general structure and processes, but and main condition. Uh, now I want to update you on the state of play of the program. Uh, first of all, how the ERC principal investigator receive implementing arrangements. As you can see, as since 2012, thousands of ERC principal investigators expressed their interest uh, to host a researcher funded by third agencies. Uh, in particular, so far, more than 1,400 uh, principal investigators expressed interest hosting CONFAP CMPQ researchers and 545 only last year. This means that the program is concretely providing the opportunity to pursue research collaboration with top scientists working in all scientific domains uh, funded by ERC. But how, how this translates in terms of accomplished research visits? Uh, since 2012, more than 400 scientists uh, visited TRC uh, teams. And particularly important is the growth of Brazil, uh, that in 2018 established a new record for a single country in a single year. Indeed, 37 Brazilian scientists visited an ERC project for that goal. Furthermore, we are uh, aware that uh, Brazilian researchers received with enthusiasm the call. Indeed, about 2,000 scientists expressed interest only last year. In conclusion, uh, a vast and comprehensive collaboration offer already translated in practical terms into hundreds of research collaboration and involved hundreds of top researchers of every level of experience in Europe and across the world. But where you can find more in details? I will leave you mentioning again that TRC CONFAP CMPQ 2020 call is open and more than 600 Brazilian researchers already expressed their interest. That line is 1st March 2020. Of course, you can find more information regarding this program and how to apply at the call web page. And you can always ask for more information at the CONFAP ERC email. Thank you for your attention and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're now going to give the floor to Lara Maranha from the innovation and research sector of the European Union delegation in Brazil. And she's also uh, Eli Natola, who is an advisor for International Cooperation in CONFAP, and Lara and Elisa, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Carla. I believe that Elisa is going to share our presentation. But I would just like to say that it is a great pleasure to be here with um, everyone and see how much we've moved forward in these recent years. It is really great seeing all of you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the call. I think Leonardo has already talked about the impact of the European Green Deal. So this specific call that was uh, launched uh, the research and innovation perspective in uh, Horizon 2020 with a 1 billion euro budget. It was done as the first 
research and innovation action to support the European Green Deal, which is a plan from the European Union to turn the economy, make it more sustainable, changing. Uh, that is transform climate challenges, environmental challenges into opportunities for a more fair transition and inclusive for everyone. So for 16 days, this was actually up and they had the topics and we got almost 6,000 uh, applications as far as this online research is concerned. And then here we have a bit of the structure of the European Green Deal and what inspired into this uh, Horizon 2020 call in terms of contribution for research innovation for this Green Deal. This is a set of transforming policies which is going to finance transition, employing sustainability in all European Union policies, not leaving anyone behind. So doing this transition in a fair and inclusive manner. We have some uh, specific goals, which is to increase European Union ambition as far as climate is concerned for 2030, 2050, providing clean energy, mobilizing industry for a circular economy, as Leonardo raised, build and renew efficiently uh, energy and resources. Um, also a target for zero pollution, preserving ecosystems and biodiversity, also farm, uh, which is an ecologically correct, healthy, fair food system, which is like from the farm to the table, and also to speed up, accelerate a change to a more sustainable and intelligent activity. So this um, Horizon 2020 Green Deal core has uh, 10 areas, eight reflect the main uh, areas of the Green Deal and the others have two horizontal areas, which is to strengthen the knowledge and capacity building of citizens. It's a little bit different from the other Horizon 2020 course because it has the goal of producing results in a shortened uh, period of time. So he's going to concentrate on technologies with very mature state of development with uh, results in the next four to six years. So the focus is on innovation and demonstration actions, but also we have innovation, research actions and support and coordination actions. So these are the areas of the call. So each of the eight areas, we have the number of topics. So areas nine and 10 are the cross-cutting areas that we've mentioned already. And then, okay, Lisa, just first, I have an idea of the timeline. So, so it was launched uh, 18th of September. So the deadline for applications is 26 of January, 2021. The evaluation is going to take place in March, June next year. And the grant agreements will be signed between October, December next year. And then I think more details, Elisa is going to provide you some more information about where you can actually find the presentations and the recording of a webinar that we held uh, in relation to the call back in October. Elisa, you have the floor now. Thank you very much. Laura, I am very happy uh, to be here. I am Elisa Ma. I am the Ad International Corporation Advisory uh, CONFAP. And I would like to add to the presentation made by Laura, basically providing the point of view of how Brazil may take part in this context. It is a European call. And Brazil takes part through an umbrella agreement which guides the categories that Brazil takes part in supporting this call, but also uh, others that are being represented here that have been implemented after this year. So it is important to point out this uh, legal umbrella agreement because it provides us with uh, uh, this legal set of foundation that that provides for. We have this administrative arrangement, which is an agreement signed between the European Union, FINEP, CONFAP and CNPQ. And through this agreement, the agencies at the federal and state levels, they can co-finance the participation of Brazil in these projects, which the European Union is supporting through the Horizon 2020 program. So we have many different uh, modes. We have collaborative uh, projects. We have all sorts of different uh, types and category of projects. And in this specific case of the Green Deal, the support is provided in order for us to provide Brazilian researchers the possibility of getting together in groups 
consortiums uh, with colleagues in Europe, as well as other parts of the country, because this uh, program is open to the whole world, then ask the sort of financing part for the agencies for the FAPs. And we have 13 FAPs actually taking part, as well as uh, CNPQ. So uh, FAP, there's no FAP support in the support may be given by CNPQ. PQ. I mean, of course, you, you need to follow some procedures, a call needs to be published, but in some, it does need to follow the rules, but all the areas that Laura presented, they're all there. So some FAPs may actually privilege an area or another, provide some specific guidance. This is always important. And this is why it's important also to consult the agencies, the different FAPs and CMPQ for you to actually have uh, the rules, and then remembering that Brazil is not automatically eligible to get resources from the Horizon 2020 program, then we go through the state and the federal agencies in order to be able to enable this cooperation. So the call continues, well, it, the, the full follows European Union rules, but you also need to consult the agencies here in Brazil in order to see whether you may actually uh, engage with these international consortiums. I would like to point out another cooperation which is not linked to the Green Deal. This is actually the another program very briefly because this actually works in the same sort of way the agencies also, the federal and state level. So the FAPs and CMPQ, they actually support with financing, but Brazil's participation in another very big, important program from the European Commission within the Horizon 2020 context. And this is going to uh, continue in the future in the Europe Horizon uh, program. And as well as the agreement that we are negotiating at the moment, we have already shown all the support in order for us to continue to have this support for the next program, which is going to be launched until January. The European Commission has a specific program to foster mobility, research, innovation, in mobility projects, and it has many different uh, actions. So CONFAP is the national uh, point of contact for these actions. And then we provide guidance to those uh, uh, applicants. We do training, capacity building, we publicize uh, opportunities. And there are some calls where Brazil is eligible to actually get direct resources from the European Commission, which would be the individual scholarships or any nationalities from anywhere in the world. It is possible. And we can see in statistics that, for example, the US, they're also not eligible to actually get uh, resources and they have a great number of individual scholarships because there's a lot of participation because we try to promote as broad as possible participation of Brazil. And despite not having automatic resource, we can see that Brazil has significant participation, uh, ranking seventh as far as a number of participation is concerned at the national, sorry, at the world uh, level, specifically for countries that are not specifically associated. So it is... Uh, a significant participation and you can do uh, network as well as individual mobility pro projects uh, in consortium, but in the sort of mobility format. So these are the opportunities that are released every year, these calls, and we hope that Brazil's participation increases ever more as it has been uh, up until now. And with that, I uh, conclude my presentation and thank you. Well, thank you very much, Elisa. And let's invite the next panelist now, uh, who is uh, Charlotte Gravitz, who is uh, the representative of uh, EU Access. So please, uh, Charlotte, the floor is yours. Well, good morning. Thank you very much. And I think the, the common uh, point uh, bringing together all these collaborative uh, projects that we have heard about today is uh, the fact that in addition to the fact that they bring together uh, European and Brazilian researchers, uh, there is also the fact that they all start with uh, mobility, with a mobility initiative. So usually when a Brazilian researcher visits Europe, uh, perhaps for some studies, uh, doctoral research or postdoctoral research, then they start creating the necessary uh, networks, but also uh, the required uh, uh, trust and confidence 
to move forward with uh, collaboration. And that's why it's a great pleasure for me to talk to you about Eraxis, which is a EU initiative to, that facilitates uh, mobility for researchers. And reminding all of you that Eraxis is available to Brazilian researchers and everything that is related to scientific cooperation and mobility and everything that's involved with it. And I uh, thank uh, Elisa for this uh, invitation and the opportunity to talk about Eraxis today. And I'd like to remind you all that Eraxis is supported by five pillars. And actually, Eraxis can help you uh, find uh, research positions uh, in a number of uh, European countries, both uh, in academia, but also in the private sector, in other sectors, but also uh, helps you find uh, resources uh, to make your research projects uh, possible and feasible, but it's also available for you to test and develop uh, your uh, required skills as uh, uh, researchers. And that's the objective of the second uh, pillar called uh, career development. I'd like to remind you also that uh, we have a very uh, useful tool called Eraxis Partnering, which is a very useful to uh, for researchers both to find partners but also to be found as a partner perhaps uh, by European researchers so you can actually uh, log up uh, to Eraxis it's free of charge and you can actually show your interest uh, and manifest your interest in collaborating with other institutions and also be found by people who want uh, to collaborate with you and finally when you or perhaps your uh, colleagues or your students, when uh, you were about to travel to Europe for a um, no research say, period, you can also count on uh, us and our support to provide you with practical information on uh, mobility and how to prepare for your arrival at this new country, your host country. We are there uh, for, for that and we represent over 40 European countries and we are present in Brazil and in Latin America as well. I'd like to talk about it very briefly, but uh, I'd just like to remind you that you can actually register you as individuals, but also as an institution, so you can have access to all these uh, tools that are made available by Eraxis. So this is our portal, and our objective is provide information on uh, uh, EU calls that are open to Brazilian researchers, but also uh, and give information about development in uh, EU member countries and also the opportunities that Brazil can have to perhaps attract European researchers here, which is also fundamental. And also, we uh, always publicize events that are held by our partners and uh, all the partners that we have around the world, actually. Uh, so I'd like to invite you to uh, sign up. And these are our contact details. You can, you can hear about us also on social uh, medias. And uh, you can also add your email address to our mailing list so that you can uh, have uh, direct notifications of uh, these uh, cooperation opportunities. And you can also share that information with your colleagues and your students so that they can also engage in mobility and perhaps in the future participate in uh, cooperation, uh, research cooperation projects with us. And thank you very much for this invitation. And I wish you, I wish us all a very successful event today. Well, thank you very much, Director. Let's uh, now invite uh, the Executive uh, Director of uh, Biodiversa, which is the uh, European uh, Biodiversity uh, Organization, Claire Blairy and she'll talk about uh, conservation restoration of degraded ecosystems and the biodiversity, including the focus on aquatic systems. So, uh, Ms. Blurry? Yeah, okay, thank you Can very you hear much. us? Yes. Um, so, say, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for inviting me to, to present a past collaboration that we had uh, between Biodiversa and uh, Brazil in the past. Uh, so, before uh, highlighting a few concrete um, 
collaboration, I just would like to give you a bit of context, explaining a bit what uh, Biodiversa is. Uh, so Biodiversa is a network, a European network of organization programming and funding research on biodiversity, ecosystem services and nature-based solutions. Uh, we have 39 partners from 24 countries, as you can see in the map, and we are more and more collaborating with uh, other uh, countries than the one who are really members of our network. Uh, and this was the case uh, for Brazil. So you see on the map that the countries in dark blue are the countries with which we collaborated and we, we collaborated with Brazil on several occasions. Um, we in biodiversity we have a broad range of uh, activities it goes from mapping activities to the development of a common research agenda uh, between our members uh, another main activity is the funding of joint call um, for research and i'm going to focus a bit more on these particular activities because it's uh, in this context that we had most of our collaboration with brazil uh, so you can see then that since the start of Biodiversa, we have launched uh, 10 calls, uh, funded, which allowed us to fund uh, 115 projects for over 238 million euros. And uh, so for some of these calls, we, we had uh, the opportunity to collaborate with Brazil. Um, we were particularly happy to, to be able to, to connect with Brazil in the context of this call, because as you can see here on this slide, um, we did an, analy an analysis in the past of the collaboration, the research collaboration between uh, the ERAS, so the European Research Area, and the Latin America and Caribbean zones. And when looking at this uh, collaboration, so we looked at the number of uh, publications between researchers from these two zones, and we saw that uh, Brazil is from the from the Latin America side. Brazil is one of the main uh, country. Uh, which is involved in this collaboration. So we were really happy then to have the opportunity to also connect uh, with uh, Brazil in the context of our joint calls, to also contribute to, um, to enhancing this collaboration between researchers from the era and from uh, Latin America, including Brazil, which is uh, clearly strong on these collaborations. Uh, so to be a bit more concrete on the collaborations we had with Brazil, so out of the 10 calls uh, I mentioned, um, Brazil participated in three of them. Uh, Brazil participated through FAPES, for example, in our 2017 call that we launched jointly with the Belmont Forum on scenarios of biodiversity and their ecosystem services. In 2019, uh, FAPES and CONFAP participated to our joint call on biodiversity and climate change. And we currently have an ongoing call, uh, which we launched uh, together with the uh, Water JPI on conservation and restoration of degraded ecosystems and the biodiversity, including a focus on aquatic systems. And there, we also have CONFAP participating, which uh, through which uh, 17 funding uh, agencies from Brazil are participating. And you can see a few figures on what this, um, what this collaboration led to. Uh, through the so, so through the two first calls, the, the one launched in 2017 and 2019, uh, five projects were funded, uh, including teams from Brazil, and the Brazilian team could access uh, through these projects uh, to over uh, 319k euro. So it's a good start for for collaboration between with um, between uh, between uh, our partners, mostly based in Europe and uh, and um, and Brazil. And so we hope that these figures of a funded project with Brazilian uh, researchers will increase when we will have the results of our ongoing call. Uh, I also would like to stress that we will, we hope to have future opportunities to continue collaborating with Brazil. Um, with, uh, within Biodiversa, we are preparing for the future and we, um, we are notably preparing a European partnership on biodiversity that would be funded by the European Commission in the context of uh, Horizon Europe. And this partnership could start in late 2021 with the first call uh, launched in the context of this partnership in late 2021. And this partnership would last for seven years and we plan to launch at least six transnational uh, joint calls and to continue also to, uh, to collaborate with uh, non-European countries in this context. So we, we hope that we will have uh, the opportunity to, to uh, continue our collaboration with uh, with Brazil in, the, in this context. So thank you very much. That's, uh, that's all for me. 
Thank you very much. Muito obrigado, diretor. Então, vamos passar para well, o próximo. Thank you very much, director. Let's invite our next uh, speaker. And the presentation will be made by the coordinator of Water JPI, Ms. Veronique Brique Logier, who will talk about the Water Joint Programming Initiative Water Challenges for a Changing World. Uh, Ms. Brique Logier, the floor is yours. I believe we have a technical problem with uh, Ms. Brique Logier's. Uh, audio let's see if she can connect to us we cannot hear her unfortunately let's see if we can uh, re-establish the link with her uh, re-establish the link with Ms. Uh, Veronique Brique Logier, who is the coordinator of JPI reminding you that it's initiative bringing together uh, uh, research support initiatives uh, both in the EU and in different parts around the world and that has promoting research and innovation in uh, a number of uh, areas through these annual calls. Uh, Professor Brique Loger, can you hear us? No, unfortunately we cannot hear her at the moment. So let's uh, move on with the event and we'll call her later as soon as we have fixed this uh, problem. So let's invite now uh, uh, the secretary uh, of the Italian uh, Ministry of Health for this uh, public call 2021. And uh, so we'll invite Maria Cristina Nieto Garcia and Maria Josefina Ruiz Alvarez. And they'll be talking about uh, cooperation on personalized Good medicine. Um, the thank floor you is yours now. To invite us to this uh, international forum to present you a permit. I will share the. Can you see our presentation? Yes, we can see. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, I'm the ERA Permit Coordinator, Cristina Nieto, and my colleague, Maria Jose Fina Ruiz, is, will be the Secretariat for the next call of ERA Permit uh, next year from the Italian Ministry of Health. I represent the National Health Institute from Carlos III from Spain. So, ERA Permit is the biggest ERA Net in health. It's an ERA Net focus on personalized medicine uh, funding research. Uh, the time frame of this RANET is five years and 32 funding organizations from 23 countries joined to make the effort to fund transnational uh, research on personalized medicine. The coordination is carried out by the National Institute of Health, Carlos III, that I represent from Spain. Personalized medicine refers to a medical model using characterization of individuals' phenotypes and genotypes for tailoring the right therapeutic strategy for the right person at the right time to determine the predisposition to disease or to deliver in timely and targeted prevention. As, a, as it was adopted by the advisory group of H2020. And uh, I, I can say that proposals from any medical research area are encouraged to participate in ERA permit calls, even if the most representative ones are neurology and oncology. The participation uh, advantages as funding organizations, uh, you can strengthen the international position of your funding organization and enhance networking and the quality of your research teams. You can reduce health uh, uh, research and development costs and also to have impo impacts at socioeconomic level, uh, such as uh, development of new employment lines or improvement your health service. And as, a, as researchers, you can, fund, uh, you can receive funding for your research, in, uh, improve your networking and international position, and increase te technology and knowledge transfer. And also, uh, you will be encouraged to become entrepreneurs. <clears throat> I will explain very, um, very fast 
Uh, the steps of an error net code, it has two steps, a pre-proposal phase and a full, a full proposal phase. And you have central eligibility rules and also national and regional eligibility rules that you have to consult for the Brazilian participation in your case. The projects that will be selected for the, um, for the funding uh, has been selected by a peer review panel of uh, scientific experts. Um, it will have a follow-up at national and regional or international level. To find the suitable partners for your research consortia, you can um, consult the partnering tool developed by IC Permet. So far, ERA Permet had launched uh, three uh, calls. The first one was launched in 2018, was a co-funded call by the European Commission. In it, uh, in it uh, 31 partners from 23 countries joined to, to launch this call. Uh, 50 proposals were invited to a full proposal phase. And finally, 25 uh, co-funded projects were selected for funding with a 28 million euros requested funding. And the secretariat was uh, the National Institute of Health, Carlos III from Spain. Sorry. The second call of ERA Permet was launched in 2019. In this call, 30 partners from 22 countries joined this call. Two third countries, Canada and Egypt, joined this call, and also one charity, the Spanish Association Against Cancer. The secretariat of this call was the French National Research Agency, ANR, from France. 56 proposals were invited to the full proposal phase. And finally, 22 funded projects were uh, selected for funding. Sorry. Uh, with 24 million euros requested funding. This year, we launched a call, uh, also a non-co-funded call, uh, in need 31 partners from 23 countries uh, participated the, in this call. Uh, Cela country, um, Panama, joined for the first time uh, era permit calls. And the secretariat was uh, the German Aerospace Center, DLR from Germany. In this call, 20, uh, 25, uh, sorry, 52 proposals uh, were invited to a full proposal phase and 18 funded projects were selected with 23 million euros requested funding. And now I, wa I want to give the floor to my colleague Maria Jose that will present you the next um, ERA permit call that, will be that has been launched today already and in which I, I have the pleasure that uh, Brazil will participate in, in this call. Maria Jose, please. Thank you, Cristina. Good morning, Brazil, and good afternoon, Europe. I am Maria Jose Ruiz on behalf of the Italian Ministry of Health, who hosts the Secretariat of the 2021 call. I will briefly describe, describe you the call key information, NICS, ERA permit steps, and the relationship with the International Consortium of uh, Personal Medicine. As you can see, uh, the estimated commitment is of 24 million of euros, euros in this call with the support of 30 funding agencies from 23 countries, uh, 16 from Europe, uh, plus five regions and one charity, three from the associated countries, and four third countries, including Egypt and three lakh countries, Brazil, Chile, and Panama. Uh, pay attention because uh, country research groups uh, are being funded by the respective country funding agencies and the application are subject to eligibility criteria and regulation of every funding organization. The proposal submission is mandatory by electronic format and a research consortia should, reg should register as soon as possible on the online submission tool. You have time to present your pre-proposal from today to the 4th of May, of March. Uh, please, uh, Cristina. Mm -hmm. uh, this call has uh, three key, key, key concepts. Uh, first, multi multidisciplinary activities by different stakeholders from academy, clinical public health research, and private partners, policy makers, regulatory health technology assessment agencies, and patient organization. Second, clinical support tools, and third, implementation. All this is structured around three research areas. The first area, translating basic to clinical research and beyond, with two modules, preclinical and clinical research. 
The second area, data and information on communication technology with one module, application in healthcare, and first, responsible implementation of in healthcare with two models, ethical, legal, and social aspect, and health economical research. Each proposal must address the module clinical research, the module application in healthcare, and the module ethical, legal, and social aspect. Of course, the other modules are optional, but you must clearly describe the add value of the modules in your, in your proposal. Next, please. Welcome to Brazil, of course. Uh, several state funding agencies have already confirmed their participation. Other state FAPs uh, might still confirm. Then please check your eligibility with your funding organization prior to the submission, and you can find all the details and all the call documents in our website. Next. Briefly, I will describe our next steps with a request of one year extension to the Commission, European Commission, where we launch a potential call on the 22 as a bridge between the already finishing Horizon 2020 and the Euros, Horizon Europe programs. Horizon Europe change and will support big European partnerships to deliver global challenge through collaborative research and innovation efforts. Era Permed and IG Permed, uh, plus European Commission has drafted a concept paper as input for the developers of the European Partnership on Personal Medicine, underlying the international cooperation. This partnership is expected to start by the 2023, and the document uh, is available for the member state consultation. Era Permed collaborates, collaborates with the International Consul, Consortium of Personal Medicine and several coordination and support actions funded by the European Commission. Among this Inch Permed's family, uh, EULAC Permed has an important role to strengthen the global efforts on personal medicine and the cooperation of Europe and Latin American and Caribbean countries. In this context, she permit welcome institutions from land countries with several benefits. Uh, for example, communication, be part of a platform to create synergies, a clinical mass, align and inspire, inspire future funding programs, taking in, into account your country priorities. Next, please. Important to, to, to stress uh, that the institution with interest to take part of this initiative to join us can be eligible to receive a travel uh, grant for the participation in each permit executive committee meeting. Please uh, contact us to receive more information about all these projects and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are now going to uh, try and go back to Veronique. Let's see. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, yes. Good morning. So, uh, yes, uh, I'm going to try. So you can hear me. Uh, I'm going to try to share my uh, screen. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about the Water JPI, the Joint Programming Initiative, that was actually uh, um, chosen and decided at the European Council in 2011. So the Water Joint Programming Initiative is part of 10 JPIs, and there are several of those uh, in, in health, in, in other fields. Um, and uh, our aim here is water challenges for a changing world. World. And you can see that we are a team of several people working on uh, on, on the water JPI. So, what no, is uh, the? Veronique, just to say that your your presentation does not appear. Oh, my presentation does not appear. Oh, I thought you said no. yes. Okay, sorry. No, we, we can see your your screen, but not your. So you don't see my screen actually. We see your screen, but we don't see your presentation. Okay, so let me see. Um, we see just a document file. Elisa, Elisa, maybe uh, you can you have it or because I I mean I'm on 
I'm exactly on my uh, PowerPoint, so I don't understand. So um, let's see if we can if we can. I can share it. I, sh I can share it for you. Perfect. But Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Elisa. That's very kind of you. Okay, so um, we're, we're going to talk about water here, and it's quite complementary of Biodiversa. We are actually working with Biodiversa very often. So the second slide, thank you. Uh, so we, we had at the Water uh, JPI, we have uh, several tools. We have a common vision, vision. We are doing strategic research agenda. And uh, the Water JPI actually is about 23 members and three observers. And uh, so we are doing also calls. Uh, we are measuring impact. We have knowledge transfer, data observatories, capacity building and mapping and foresight activities. And last but not least, a lot of international cooperation. Actually, international cooperation became a very important, uh, uh, very, very important um, uh, strategic uh, priority for us. And next slide, you can see that You can see that since 2013, uh, we, had ha we have had several uh, multilateral joint calls. Uh, we started in 2015, where we included South Africa and Israel. Uh, then in 2016, it's Canada, Egypt, Taiwan, Tunisia, and Turkey who joined us. And in 2017, Brazil. So uh, I'm very happy to, to, to present that because in 2018, in 2020, and in 2000, the two calls of 2020, Brazil is uh, still amongst uh, the funders. And uh, I'm not getting into the details of the calls, uh, but the, the, the BioDiv Restore, the last call has just been closed and we are very proud to have had almost 180 pre-proposals. Uh, so we are very, very happy. And that year, for the first time, we uh, welcomed Morocco. Next slide, please. But the Water JPI, it's not only calls, it's also knowledge hub for knowledge sharing, transfer and dissemination. And we are quite proud of this tool because we uh, we want to uh, increase the networking of selected research groups and we want to include stakeholders within the scientific community to increase the dialogue which is very important in the water field and to enhance also the critical mass of research and technology excellence so we share knowledge we share transfer we capacity we we build capacity but also we draft policy driven documents and uh, and we have on our website policy briefs that you can consult and also we are favoring the mobility in all dimensions not only geographical but also thematical so this is what is important in this knowledge hub it's a holistic approach and how we are doing that typically we are setting up following joint calls activities and we are gathering those researchers that have been uh, that that have been uh, selected uh, next slide please so just an example of one of the joint calls that was launched last February with uh, AMR, the JPI AMR, antimicrobial anti resistance and oceans. So the topic was risks posed to human health and the environment by pollutants and pathogens present in water resources. And we had 32 funding agencies amongst the, them, of course, we had Brazil. And, uh, and we had a two-step procedure and uh, we had 53, uh, we are at the moment in the second step and we have 53 invited proposals to submit and uh, we, are, we have about 27.2 million euros. Uh, so this call is called aquatic pollutant. Next slide, please. 
So the next chapter of Water JPI under Horizon Europe is the partnership. And uh, my colleagues, uh, Claire and Marie Jose, uh, Bo Maria Jose, both uh, started talking about this partnership. So for us, it's the partnership Water for All, Water Security for All. And it is part of the first launch partnerships that are going to be, let's hope, funded in 2021. And we are at the moment uh, launching a survey that is open until uh, January 11th. So please go to the survey and answer the survey. And next slide, I'm going to get into a little detail, more into details about those partnerships. So it's this partnership is uh, under the um, uh, uh, under uh, the umbrella of, uh, of course, the uh, research uh, and innovation at Europe, but also the DG environment at the European level is, uh, is uh, involved. So here you have the waterfall partnership with the four pillars, research and innovation, science policy, internationalization and demonstrating. And against, again, internationalization is a big pillar of our, uh, of our um, uh, partnership. Next slide, please. Oh, uh, just one second. Uh, the contact uh, here is uh, uh, Olivier Bouc, and uh, and we are in the process, just to, to show you the process, we are in the process of uh, uh, listing the different engagement of the member state co commitments, but also we are, uh, co we welcome commitments of other countries. So, this is Olivier, who is in charge at the French funding agency ANR uh, about this partnership. And last but not least, I would like to thank everyone uh, to thank you for the invitation. And uh, you can have more information on our different uh, website and uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Então, Thank you very much. Sir. Let's continue now with our next uh, panel, Mr. Jean-Pierre Neto, who is uh, responsible of the Brazilian Institute of Space Research. The floor is yours. Okay. Muito obrigado. Vou colocar aqui a apresentação. Thank you very much. I'm going to put up my presentation. Okay, I'm going to start. If you can't see, please let me know, okay? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank, on behalf of FAPESP, on behalf of Dr. Christophan Albuquerque, who is the manager for collaboration and research of the foundation. Also on behalf of Alexandre Ducato, who is the scientific research coordinator for CONFAP, for the invitation for us to be able to present this uh, collaboration between FAPESP or better, FAPESP's uh, participation within the Bellman Forum. I'd also like to uh, agree uh, all the authorities in attendance here, as well as all the attendees. So my name is Jean-Pierre Ometo, as Carla mentioned at the start. And in addition to being an MP researcher, which is the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, uh, an institute of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, and we work very much within the universe of scientific funding in Brazil, I, always, I also work in FAPESP in coordinating the global climate change research for the foundation. I'm also part of the Bellman Forum Steering Committee of which FAPESP is a member. So I'm going to try to quickly make a general presentation of what this uh, initiative is all about. So the Bellman Forum was established in 2009 as a partnership between funding organizations as well as international councils and regional consortia who were looking to advance uh, science from a transdisciplinary uh, manner. So this was a very important uh, movement from stakeholders from the start of the putting together of the projects that have a central scientific focus. 
So it operates within a challenge which was uh, proposed at the start of the consortium, which is to promote transdisciplinary science in trying to increase entrepreneurial and also in issues for change in adapting to climate changes in the world. And within this context, the cross-cutting quality is actually very important. So we have many organizations that take part in this forum. This was founded with 25 organizations. Today we have a few more. And we have a partnership such as the Inter-American Institute for Climate Change Research, which is actually an institute that covers the Americas, the future Earth, EGO, uh, IASA and whatnot. And of course, we also have a lot of partners within the European Union, such as funding organizations and also the GPIs. The approach uh, for this Belmont Forum is very much like what I was saying at the start, which is basically the idea is for you to have a project in a co-design strategy between stakeholders and scientific uh, community and players from the public or private sector, from the third sector, also and within this co-design to propose the projects and the outputs would be shared between the production of science and the use of these outputs, very much on the ground science kind of perspective. And of course, as stakeholders, they bring all of this issue of values, importance, needs, urgency, and science, not just natural sciences, but this transdisciplinary, transdisciplinarity brings this context of a union, if you will, of uh, social and natural sciences and humanity. So, so this is the structure of how this Bellman Forum works. So the partners, they can have new partners at each call. The Bellman structure has members that I've uh, mentioned at the start. I'm going to show you on the map. And we've got a governance structure. We have co-chairs in steering committee as well as the secretariat that provides us with the support. We have all the dimensions, dynamics, and formats for uh, heading, conducting the projects. And the important aspect, though, is that uh, as far as science institutions and local partners are concerned, they have to deal financially with the local funders. So here in Brazil, FAPESP is a member of Belmont Forum, and it has been so since its start, but the Belmont Forum is open to more partners, CONFAP uh, took part uh, with Elisa in the last plenary for the Belmont Forum to assess the possibility of, of associating themselves to new calls, for example. So these are the institutions as they are spread throughout the world. So we have this whole sort of universe of distribution. If you in addition to that, we have opportunities that are added to these initial members. I'm going to go quickly because my five minutes is actually finished, but this is very important because this is how the collaborative research actions, the CRA, which is how you fund a certain line of research. So, so the CRAs, are the strategies really, and up until now, the Bellman Forum has had 17 calls for proposals, okay, committing over 120 million euros in 134 projects. So we have a great number of scientists involved in 90 countries. What's important about the calls for proposals though, is that in principle, they demand more than a country or an institution from many different countries to take part. And here you have the whole uh, distribution since 2012 until 2019. So Claire, he talked about the biodiversa. And uh, here uh, we also have a partnership from the Belmont Forum. And there are two that are actually ongoing partnerships at the moment. They're ongoing as far as assessment of the proposals that we've actually had through to pathways to sustainability, 
which is about the SDGs and also uh, the other uh, partnership with Europe and here to focus very much in the Belman Forum and European Commission relation because they work very closely and in line with Future Earth, which is a global network of scientists, researchers and innovators striving to find, well, that, that finding solutions with a very clear focus on sustainability. And we see that the different calls for proposals, they change from food security, fresh water, climate change. So it is uh, actually very varied as far as this call for proposals are concerned. We have a co-financing and also the GJPIs. And it has a very intense communication strategy. So this issue of the relations between local actors, it is important for communication to be made so that um, the results from science, it needs to go back to society, it needs to go back to the community. So it has this very important aspect as far as communication is concerning here. Just a small element. Actually, there's, there's a bit of a bit of marketing really for an event that's going to be held next year, which is the Sustainability Research Innovation Congress in 2021, which is going to be held in Australia. It's being organized by Bellman, by Future Earth. And this is a great opportunity to bring this issue of sustainability, transdisciplinarity to the stakeholders. Well, we would like to thank you again once more for the opportunity to be here today. You have the links for FAPES, for the Belmont Forum itself. And once more, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for your attention. And I do apologize for overraining my time a little bit. No problem. You are very much on time. So let's continue now with our next panel member, Evelyn Deporte from the General Direction for Research and Innovation from the European Union, who's going to talk about global research for preparations in relation to infectious diseases. Thank you very much. And good morning to our colleagues here in Brazil. I do not speak uh, well enough to continue in Portuguese, but I like to say hello in Portuguese. Uh, English to make sure that everybody understands what I'm saying. Um, I hope you see uh, the presentation. So basically, I will. I am from the. I work in the European Commission, but uh, I will uh, present uh, an initiative which is called Globedar, uh, which is an, a network of uh, international research funding organizations uh, that focuses on uh, investing in research preparedness uh, and response to infectious disease epidemics. So basically, Madam, uh, I'm sorry, I just want to stop you because we have some problem with your presentation. So let's try to, uh, we have some problem here. I think we have to try to uh, present again on Zoom. Can you just do it again in order if we can see? Yes, perfect. I think if you just put on present there on PowerPoint, we can see the entire presentation. Let's see, if we can do it. No. Um, not yet. One second. Let's see. No. Uh, no. I think we have some problem with the slides. So I think it's better you come back and present. Uh, okay. Yeah, like this, reducing the the slides on your left, so we can we have. Uh, yes. I don't know if we can read. Let's see here. Let let try to try to check with the technician part. So much better like this. I don't know if you can see. I will ask uh, to the technicians. Uh, estamos vendo a apresentação da senhora de Portela. Deixa eu ver aqui se temos. Can we visualize the presentation? Okay. Elisa, I want to share the presentation. I think it's better. Please, Elisa. Uh, please, madam, you can continue. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let me. Okay, I don't see the slides yet, but I'll just uh, continue. Uh, so basically, uh, Glopedar, uh, as mentioned, so the 
uh, the purpose of, so it's a network of international funding uh, organizations and it was uh, founded in 2013 uh, by the heads of, so you can go to the next uh, slide. Yeah, so it was uh, funded, um, uh, launched in 2013 by the heads of uh, international uh, research organizations, what we call uh, heroes. And the objective is really to facilitate and accelerate and deepen collaboration between research funders on emerging uh, infectious diseases. And there's uh, two ways to do this. One, investing uh, to strengthen global research uh, preparedness in between the crisis, but then during the crisis really mobilize resources rapidly and effectively uh, to uh, facilitate a research response in uh, the uh, a crisis. So the next slide shows you that uh, we have a total, Glopedar has a total of 29 members all over the world. And in uh, Brazil, there is uh, three members, which is uh, the Butantan Institute, Fiocruz and uh, uh, FAPESP. Uh, three observers, which is the uh, WHO, uh, CEPI and uh, also uh, EDCTP. Uh, next slide. Um, so basically, this slide shows the, uh, the connection between research preparedness for a better response. So in case, so outside of an epidemic uh, context, the focus is really to work uh, together between the funders on um, uh, uh, de developing a policy for um, uh, to facilitate research in uh, emergencies, removing any barriers uh, on uh, uh, implementing research in an emergency situation, but also a further build operational research, uh, research uh, response and uh, also work on developing coordinated funding uh, mechanisms. Um, when an epidemic hits, let's say, then we go into research response mode. And then it's more, more about really trying to facilitate a rapid research uh, response. So through uh, coordination of uh, funding at a global uh, level and also uh, support, um, uh, I ensure that support to the researchers uh, in the first uh, line. In the next slide. So the next slide, it gives some uh, examples on uh, research preparedness. Um, so the activities outside of a con uh, epidemic context. So which is really the uh, example of uh, de defining research priorities. And that was done, for example, for chikungunya and onionyong and uh, Mayar uh, Mayaru viruses. Uh, also is to try to support infrastructure readiness so that the research sites are ready and can be uh, can adapt fast in case of an uh, emergency of an uh, epidemic and for that we have a specific working group on uh, clinical trial uh, networks um, that uh, also yeah, as you see by the logos includes uh, networks from all over the world. If you look at the next slide, uh, we've done also quite a lot on uh, enabling data sharing as funders, where uh, we first published some uh, common principles of data sharing in public health emergencies. And that was followed by the publication of a, a, Glo a Globedar roadmap for uh, data sharing in the context of uh, public health emergencies. And on the website, you will find links uh, to these uh, uh, documents and I'm happy to provide them if uh, you need them. Um, and also the importance of social sciences research uh, has been really put uh, on the forefront. Uh, there was also a, a roadmap published for social sciences in um, research preparedness and response in the context of epidemics. And uh, this work was also the foundation of a Horizon 2020 project, uh, which is called Sonar Global, that brings together uh, social sciences, sciences researchers that work together in case of an epidemic or pandemic. The next slide. Uh, give some examples of what we do in the context then of an epidemic. So then it's really trying to, as funders, uh, research funders all over uh, the world, try to make 
have that coordinated assessment of what the outbreak uh, is, what research uh, is needed. And uh, we do that also in articulation with uh, the WHO. And uh, we can set up specific working groups for the out in response to the outbreak uh, to identify res uh, specific research gaps and priorities in the context of the ongoing outbreak. We also uh, have organized um, scientific and research meetings. And uh, a good example, I think, was uh, one that we had in December 2016 in Sao Paulo uh, on uh, Zika virus and try to have uh, facilitate this uh, synergies between uh, funded researchers across uh, the world uh, to work together on uh, their research towards this uh, common uh, goal. Um, and so for Zika, we had the one in December, but also in June, uh, a follow up uh, meeting. And then, of, of course, uh, it's very important to work uh, then with the local organizations. And that's the importance also of having these uh, having members of Glopidar uh, in uh, all over the world, because then it really facilitates that collaboration between the scientists then uh, during uh, an outbreak. Next slide. Uh, the next slide, this one gives some examples of uh, uh, coordinated uh, responses, rapid research funding responses where Robert has uh, really uh, made an effort. And that was uh, already in the Ebola uh, outbreak in West Africa uh, in 2014, but also then uh, the later ones uh, in uh, West Africa and then in, uh, pardon, in uh, DRC. Then uh, Zika, as we mentioned in Latin America, but also during yellow fever in 2016 in uh, Angola and DRC or plague in Madagascar or Lhasa in uh, Nigeria. And then the next slide is uh, the last one, which is uh, obviously bringing us back to the current situation of uh, COVID-19. And this slide really uh, shows the, um, gives an overview of some of the activities where Globedar really uh, stepped forward. Um, and you will see uh, the pinkish uh, colored boxes. Uh, so for example, the first one on the joint statement on uh, data sharing that was uh, first published, uh, I think in 2016, um, following the Zika in, in response to the Zika uh, epidemic. And then it was revised and uh, pushed again forward uh, in the context of the COVID-19 uh, epidemic on the importance of uh, data sharing in this context of public health emergencies. And so it was um, led by Welcome Trust and uh, endorsed by all members of uh, Globedar. Uh, together with WHO, Globedar um, organized this uh, Global Research and Innovation Forum in February that some of you probably have attended on identifying uh, research priorities for this uh, novel uh, outbreak. Remember in February, everything was still new. Then uh, we have done a very regular response strategy coordination meetings with all members of uh, Globedar. So to make sure that this information flows between the different funders, who is doing what, what is the focus, what are the priorities, what are the gaps uh, and so on. Uh, and in this context, there is in collaboration with the UK CDR, uh, a live uh, COVID-19 research project tracker. So which really tracks, gives an, an overview of all the research that has been is being funded in the context of uh, COVID-19 uh, response and how that also relates to the priorities that have been defined uh, through uh, WHO. And then in July, uh, we had a first also a research uh, synergy uh, meeting uh, on different topics such as vaccines, treatment, and um, social sciences, and also diagnostics and ending transmission. And the research report, uh, report was, uh, I, or the summary was published also. And uh, just last week, there was uh, the meeting on long COVID. Uh, so really um, bringing researchers and patients and funders uh, together 
to discuss uh, the implications of uh, long COVID, so the longer term uh, consequences of COVID-19 uh, infection. So that's an example, concretely, how Glopidar uh, functions in the context of an epidemic. And uh, so uh, happy to uh, reply to any questions uh, that you may have. Over. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's continue with uh, the. Oh, oh, desculpe, vou falar em português. Estava escutando aqui em inglês e veio I was listening in English and I started speaking in English. Sorry about that. So let's move on with our next uh, speaker, Sofia Cordeiro, who is the coordinator of the foundation. Okay. She is the coordinator of the uh, Portugal uh, Agency for Science and Innovation, and she will start her presentation with Muito a obrigada, video. Carlos. O vídeo está embebido na well, na apresentação. Já lá, já lá much, chegaremos. Carlos. Antes de mais, obrigada também the pelo convite e we'll get there in a minute. Uh, Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, that was uh, made by Confab, which is uh, very important for this project I'm going to talk about. So this All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance is a collaborative uh, organization that promotes uh, cooperation in the area of uh, marine science and particularly the Atlantic Ocean. And I coordinate this program, but I also coordinate uh, uh, the Existem program under the Foundation for Science and Innovation in Portugal. Uh, this alliance is uh, supported by three pillars. They are uh, connecting, cooperating, and acting. These are the three pillars that support our work. So the objective is to improve or, or contribute towards increasing knowledge in this area. And, uh, just to, to start, uh, I'd like to show you a video that describes uh, what this alliance does. And this alliance is uh, actually being promoted by a number of uh, projects supported by the European Union and a number of initiatives or individual initiatives uh, by different members of the alliance. And uh, now we have uh, some of these uh, projects uh, ended now in late 2020, like AORA. Uh, uh, but also other initiatives are still ongoing. So now you can see uh, here in the video a bit more about our work. So in our dialogues with Brazil and South Africa, we saw an increasing desire for us to work together to mobilize the community in the South Atlantic and to build up what had happened in the North Atlantic. The Bellin Statement, together with the agreements with Cabo Verde and Argentina, constituted the next step in creating the All-Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance a group of countries from pole to pole, all with a common goal, enhancing marine research and innovation cooperation for the benefit of citizens. Our All-Atlantic Ocean Cooperation will ensure that research and innovation provide the solutions to the communities faced with the changing Atlantic Ocean, leading to a more sustainable future. Co-responsibility, co-ownership, and co-implementation will be the pillars for tackling key common areas of interest. Working together to share resources and to collect data will map unknown territories, align budgets, and maximize the benefits for citizens. These things in the ocean are very expensive. They are the instruments that we use for research. So I think that together uh, we can able to share the costs. 
But uniting countries is not enough. We are opening the initiative to society, including the public, to build the All-Atlantic Ocean Research Community. The, the policies it will only make a difference if the population itself understands why they are doing it. By collaborating with the youth to have ocean-engaged citizens from an early age, our alliance gives the next generation the tools to create a more sustainable Atlantic. Uh, there's a very good African saying that says, if you want to go far, you go alone. If you want to go further, you go together. So join us and help make our Atlantic a better, bluer place for all. A mensagem que é indicada no vídeo, so join us, é mesmo verdade. So, Portanto, estamos de facto numa, uh, num momento em que a participação uh, de todos os stakeholders é crucial. Eu já, já explico is, uh, dizer que dizer ainda que, que uh, recentemente, em, no início deste mês, uh, uh, Marrocos month, juntou-se a, a esta cooperação atlântica, uh, alargando uh, dentro dos uh, países uh, que estão uh, a trabalhar uh, uh, nesta Atlantic, cooperação. Uh, Uh, para que uh, and join a number of other countries that are already part of this alliance. Uh, Atlantic, Now, if we want to uh, uh, cooperate with a number of different countries uh, uh, across the Atlantic, we have developed a number Azul, of Azul, initiatives. So it's uh, a multi-stakeholder platform that uh, promotes knowledge um, and promote uh, data ai, and knowledge sharing. We also work towards promoting uh, the alignment of uh, synergies uh, and this uh, will constitute the best way to momento, bring together all these efforts and all this uh, cooperation. Launching uh, five different platforms in the area, uh, in specific Atlantic, cooperation areas and involving uh, over 70 experts uh, é at Atlantic level. level. And we are uh, therefore cooperating and connecting all these different partners involved in Atlantic cooperation. And uh, these are projects that are financed by the European Union uh, under this alliance. And in November 2019, a number of different uh, platforms were launched uh, to promote uh, further interaction. But even before that, a number of different projects had already been launched and uh, were ongoing. So these platforms have been working uh, on the identification of strategies and uh, performance indicators and have been able to identify existing synergies that may contribute towards uh, uh, achieving our objectives uh, related to uh, Uh, our cooperation, but also identifying the needs for these objectives, for these uh, strategic and operational objectives being met. So all this work was uh, directly linked to, of course, uh, uh, the political uh, level. And at the beginning of this meeting, uh, we heard uh, one of our co-chairs, Professor Zaira, and uh, her support has been very important for this. And these platforms uh, were developed and were presented at this uh, forum in early December. And they promoted six uh, joint actions, which are long-term activities that we expect to have long-term impacts, and they are supported with existing resources. So we do not want to reinvent the wheel. We want to use this wheel in a more balanced and more coherent way towards actions that uh, will uh, promote, therefore, uh, cooperation and uh, cooperation uh, under the UN uh, uh, system, which is fundamental for uh,
uh, for this cooperation uh, uh, in the context of this uh, UN decade. So here's a number of joint activities that were launched through this platform. I won't be talking about each of them specifically because uh, information on these joint actions will be available either in January or February next year. And we are developing, we're finalizing all the information packages and they'll all be available uh, through this link that you can see here on this website. Uh, the, uh, the most important thing is for us to have a joint action in the area of uh, capacity building, two joint actions in the area of uh, trans uh, knowledge transfer, uh, one in the area of data sharing, uh, two in the area of blue schools, and uh, finally one in the area of uh, sharing structures. And we're talking about observation structures and uh, knowledge and research structures as well. So we are building on what we already have. And this uh, is, uh, uh, also has attracted uh, uh, the uh, interest of the Brazilian scientific community and we are counting on this deep involvement of Brazilian researchers and Brazilian experts. And for example, in the area dealing uh, with uh, uh, knowledge transfer, the leader of this area, of this pillar, is Brazilian. And uh, we have uh, other Brazilian co-leaders, for example, in the joint action that deals with the sharing infrastructure. So the objective here is to continue promoting all this Atlantic cooperation because, uh, you know, that the overall design is uh, already has already been agreed, but we're still uh, working on the details because it's an ongoing work. So, uh, we are still, therefore, uh, uh, inviting everyone to participate. And how do you expect you to engage in this? You can either uh, work uh, or participate as a funder, but also we want to engage the whole uh, research and innovation community. And in this first stage of implementation, the first year and a half, uh, this is uh, guaranteed by the uh, ORA project, but uh, we expect to continue working on this for the next uh, 10 years. So that's why it's important for us to engage further uh, funding agencies uh, and philanthropic organizations so that we can move on and continue with our work. And it's very important, therefore, that all these uh, uh, FAPs in Brazil, that you you uh, learn more about uh, our work and decide to work with us because uh, uh, you uh, may have been involved already in the development of international uh, funding and many of you already have the uh, uh, expertise and the experience of working in this area, but uh, perhaps we need to make some more arrangements for this to be possible. And it's fundamental for us to develop this uh, partnership at global level. And therefore, we extend this invitation to uh, the research and innovation community, not only to join these actions, not to work together with us, but also to engage in opportunities known, uh, opportunities that will be uh, made available in the, uh, in the near future. And that's it. That's what I had to say. Thank you very much. Uh, the site for the, uh, the website for the All Atlantic uh, Ocean Org is that is there available. If you have any question, if you want to make any contact with us about this, to learn more about the initiative, you can do that via the website. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are now going to talk to our last panel member for this panel. Mr. Lelio Fellows is the coordinator for international cooperation at CNPQ. And he is going to talk about a partnership and the perspective of a partnership between the European Union and Latin America and the Caribbean for research infrastructure. And you have the floor, sir. I don't think we are. Hello. Uh, yes, thank you. It is 
It's very satisfying to be here at the event. And my first few comments would be to thank CONFAP for the invitation and for the opportunity to share with you about this activity as far as infrastructure exchange concerned. Well, first, I'd like to say that the infrastructure issue is recognized as key to all areas of scientific technological knowledge by a great number of aspects, not just due to its essential uh, infrastructure being the main field where the research is actually conducted, but also infrastructure as the environment where exchange and development can actually take place for the scientists. And it is really a special emphasis that we see the issue of infrastructure as a core issue in all technology and science development issue. And this discussion within the level of the inter-regional cooperation between Latin America and the European Union, this is something which has been around for quite some time already. And we could point out the first formalizing of uh, interest for developing this partnership in the fifth meeting of the uh, science and technology officials in the relation between uh, Latin America and the Caribbean and the European Union when this issue once more came uh, into highlight and then it became once more, and we are in 2016, as one of the pillars for cooperation between the two regions. This is then consolidated in the SOMGIRI meeting in Brussels in March 2017 when it takes up a, a status of a central activity as research common area between the two regions. And thus the work group in the last meeting, which was held in El Salvador, they approved the a staging and consolidation of this work here is one of the pillars for inter-regional cooperation, CNPQ, since then has been following this work and has been contributing strongly and it still bases itself on this um, initiative as an observer because in this last year there was a decision where Brazil has withdrawn from CELAC, C-E-L-A-C. And the goal of this work group of uh, research infrastructure is to have an exchange of information at the national and regional level between countries in the region to identify possible opportunities for joint cooperation in the effective use of infrastructure, particularly emphasizing highly complex infrastructure. So the main activities of this work group that was set up was the exchange of best practices and the definition, establishing of roadmaps in the methodological process for developing infrastructure, as well as the exchange of experience on management of research infrastructure, uh, including aspects related to policies and industrial development, which may be developed in infrastructure projects also analysis being uh, conducted with uh, respective views of the infrastructure and the cooperation potential, which is identified from this within the interregional relationship environment and also 
to be able to have the real possibility of identifying a set of infrastructure that could have its use more shared and thus reach higher use of the infrastructure available in the European environment, the possibility of uh, researchers in the Latin American region to use it. And these are the data of the action which was funded with resources from the European Union, also the type of action, which is a coordination and support action. Uh, got the acronym EU LAC, for and this is the work which is being developed starting in December 2019. That is a few months before the whole world was faced with the pandemic. So this project has 18 partners, which are institutions from Spain, Uruguay, Germany, Portugal, Italy, Mexico, Finland, Chile, Romania, Costa Rica, Colombia, UK and Brazil. It is coordinated by Spain through their Ministry of Science and Technology. As I mentioned, the project started in December 2019, which is when it kicked off really. And since then, not a lot of experiments were able to be done with the exception of the virtual sort of uh, means, which has actually happened very intensively, but there was great prejudice, particularly with the pres issues that required uh, presence of people and also the exchange between the infrastructure managers and experts. It is important to mention that despite these problems in relation to traveling, for example, there was significant, uh, well, it wasn't that significant the prejudice because the communication platforms allowed us to develop work and then currently the work has actually moved into advanced levels, particularly the first deliverables that were identified and proposed and particularly CMPQ together with the Finnish institution, they are leading the work package too which is involved with the identifying more precisely of a set of infrastructure in Latin America, which are viable and possible of being placed as uh, infrastructure to be part of this exchange platform. And at the same time, the developing of a set of scenarios that may guide the rest of the work in relation to the general involvement as far as infrastructure is concerned, basically speaking, because this is work which is right at the start. These are the issues that I have to report on, as well as our great expectation that the full involvement of all our partners in Latin America and the European Union, they will give us the conditions to have a significant specific advance in this exchange action between infrastructure an action which we've been striving to reach for a long time in the interregional relations between Latin America, the Caribbean and the European Union. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fellows. We shall continue going into our second uh, panel. I would ask, though, our uh, uh, guests to give us really keep to the five minutes that they have because we are already running one hour behind schedule. And I believe that many people have other engagements today. And also there are a lot of people taking part from other countries and because of time zones, we might have problems to actually continue to take part. 
So we now have President D, who is going to preside the session, which will be International Bilateral Cooperation Initiatives and sign of Memorandum of Understanding. And Professor Adir, you have the floor, sir. Of yes, from what we've been able to see, the number of cooperations with uh, the European Union. And here we're going to focus on multilateral cooperation. We are going to have the presentation of bilateral cooperation opportunities, Brazil and other countries, some data from the European Union, some outside of the European Union, but these are very important opportunities. And without further ado, I think that we can go to the first presentation, which is a new cooperation opportunity this time with Australia. And at the end of this presentation, we are going to have the signing of an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding. Yes, thank you, uh, President. Now I'll give the floor to Matthew Johnson from the Council of Education from the Australia Embassy, who is going to talk to us. Mr. Johnson, you have the floor. Thank you very much and good morning, everybody in Brazil. It is also morning here uh, in Australia. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Odier, President of CONFAPI, uh, and acknowledge him and all presidents of FAPIs and other authorities here today uh, for this meeting. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as Professor Odier has said, uh, we will be signing a memorandum of understanding between the Australian government and CONFAPI today. Uh, the, it, the Australian side has already signed this MOU at an event uh, two weeks ago, and we're very pleased to be able to sign this uh, MOU with CONFAPI today. Uh, already, Australian and Brazilian researchers have been collaborating for many years, and in the last three years, almost 8,000 publications or joint publications between Australian and Brazilian uh, researchers have been published with a fairly uh, significant impact rating of 4.18. Uh, that said, uh, one of the areas that the Australian government and CONFAPI would like to work more together on is encouraging strategic uh, networks of collaborative research and so this agreement between CONFAPI and the Ministry of Education, Skills and Employment in Australia will provide a framework for Brazilian FAPIs or funding agencies and Australia's research institutions to collaborate in line to strategic aims and goals. The Ministry of Education in Australia, in addition to education and other programs, is responsible for the uh, administration and funding of two of our larger research funding bodies, uh, the Australian Research Council and the National Health and Medical Research Council, as well as our uh, critical research infrastructure program. So the Minister of Education in Australia has endorsed the signing of this uh, Memorandum of Understanding with CONFAPI to promote and increase international research collaboration. Australia's research funding uh, agencies allocate funds on the basis of competitive globally available grants, uh, as opposed to joint calls or bilateral funds. Uh, as a result, we have negotiated through this MOU a new clause which would allow uh, Australian research funds where there are joint research projects involving Brazilian researchers to share, uh, to share decisions of Australia's funding agencies for the purposes of releasing funds um, in Brazil. Given Australia's funds are internationally competitive and globally available, we undertake uh, rigorous peer review processes and this peer review process and decisions, ultimate decisions will be shared with Brazilian funding agencies for the purposes of joint funding projects on the Brazilian side. In addition to, to this, uh, we have included uh, a number of activities that will commence in 2021, which I won't spend too much time on today, uh, but those include virtual research collaboration events and should international borders um, open uh, at, at an appropriate time, technical missions of researchers and funding agency presidents. Next slide, please. 
Uh, within the Memorandum of Understanding, we have included a uh, one-stop shop for identifying partners for international collaboration in science and research. Science and research in Australia is quite decentralised and there are many partners for whom a Brazilian could uh, seek to partner with, as is seen on this slide. Uh, as part of their Memorandum of Understanding, we maintain this uh, booklet, which identifies the core research institutions, funding agencies, uh, and, and international collaboration opportunities, both with private sector, industry, our cooperative research center network and industry growth center network uh, in a document. We will shortly be launching a, a version of this document in Portuguese, and we'll share that with CONFAPI for the benefit of all funding agencies in Brazil. Next slide, please. So that's my presentation for today. I would just like to reiterate again that Australia is very interested in exploring and deepening our research collaboration with partners uh, in Brazil. We're very pleased to be able to sign this memor memorandum of understanding today with CONFAPI to enable this and to, to enable this deepening and strengthening of our research collaboration uh, to continue. And I thank you very much. Back to you, Professor. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. So, uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. I'm going to give the floor back to President Udier for the signing of this MOU. And thank you, uh, Mr. President. And I would ask uh, Mr. Johnson to keep his camera on for us to uh, do this uh, signing. The floor is yours. As uh, Matthew mentioned, two weeks ago, we had the Australian part signing this MOU in a virtual event also, and we got a copy of this memorandum, which has been signed by Kai Sandercook from the Ministry of Education, Skills and Employment uh, in Australia. In this moment, I'm now going to sign on behalf of Brazil here. So this MOU has now been signed between CONFAP and ADESI uh, Australia. Have you taken the picture for, for our records? I believe so. Perfect. Congratulations. And let's continue with our panel. We now give the floor to Professor José Francisco Gonzalves Jr., who is the president of the Tropical Alliance Association for Water Research. Uh, we now can see the presentation by Professor José Francisco Gonzalves Jr., and if he can hear us, I'd ask him to say hello. Tropical Water Research Alliance. I can hear you. Can you see me? Yes, you have the floor, sir. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Professor Tiago Sheen for the opportunity. And on behalf of him, I'd like to congratulate everyone because, you know, uh, we have time restrictions here, so I can't really thank everyone individually here. I'm representing. Tropical Water Research Alliance, which is a TWRA, which is a partnership that we have between Brazil and Australia with the support of the Australian Embassy. We saw uh, Mr. Matthew Johnson talking about the partnerships that we've got with Australia. And this is an example, a practical example based on a partnership that we've been conducting since 2015, brought about by our colleagues in Australia on behalf of Stuart Ban from the University of Grifton. It is the director of the Australian Readers Institute. He came on an official mission from the embassy to prospect partners for the TWRA. This is a partnership that has been being built for five years, sharing customs, ideas, having the best possible relationships between different cultures where a lot of the times we find 
common points this uh, partnership uh, started initially between university of brazil and griffith university in 2017 which was the first time when the twra uh, came as far as this official document is concerned today for us to be able to provide an adequate perspective of the actions in Brazil and how they're actually being developed based on our laws and our difficulties even in the ceremony today of signing a memorandum of understanding a group of researchers decided to set up a non-profit organization public which is the uh, water tropical alliance association that gives the legal uh, status to this um, research initiative because uh, most of our, us in this alliance we are researchers so the general goal of this alliance is to develop environmental technology supporting methodological support shared for the development of integrated management sustainable management of uh, tropical hydrographic basins through the training of teams and mitigation of environmental degradation effects and climate change we're talking about 30 areas of knowledge where we see water as a cross-cutting problem to be solved through different actors experiences that are going to converge to give some sort of return to society effective cheaper actions solving all the problems presented in relation to water our target for the next five years is to work with the conservation of biodiversity in our water basins develop technologies for the sustainable development and environmental crisis solutions namely water crisis also the drafting of a proposal for program of the repairing zones in water basins which are the most sensitive areas which are permanent preservation areas provided for in brazilian law which makes the water ecosystem healthier the enhancement of communication methods between academia society and decision makers so the alliance is also a link between these different parties and the training and enhancement of professionals we pointed out eight thematic challenges so we have direct uh, challenges such as flooding conservation of biodiversity water security influence of the use of uh, landing rivers and lakes fragmentation restoration of rivers water balance also three cross-cutting uh, issues modeling assessment and information monitoring and also social and cultural dimensions of water with these uh, eight items we can get an integrated management of the water basins and a shared coordination between the two countries changing swapping experiences and technology who those who who are this twra these 10 dots are the 10 uh, twra uh, offices if you're here in brazil we have another nine being implemented in the country so we're talking about 120 researchers from 40 institutions here with at least 38 postgraduate programs it is set up in a democratic forum with an assembly it is managed by the board a vice president president financial director we have uh, Dr. Leonardo, who talked at the start and uh, said that they are part of this. We have a fiscal council and the execution of this bottom up uh, effect. Uh, the basis actually allow uh, this. We have the uh, organizational chart of the alliance. We have the secretariat with this uh, visual uh, management and international relationships about the presidency the vice presidency we have the department for innovation 
uh, for courses, for events, and we have the financial director, project management. Uh, the idea of the alliance has been built in the university with research institutes, how it starts from the bottom up. So this MOU is essential in the uh, actions for, uh, and we have two points that needs actually to be a developer. I could not forget to thank the Fabs from Speech Center who uh, put up 300,000 for the state researchers in the Araucaria Foundation that since last year has been negotiating the possibility of around 300,000 and until the end of this year, the start of the next year, the MPQ soon as the perspective to help caps through uh caps printy i think it is has provided uh eighty thousand reais in uh the sandwich a phd or an exchange of researchers and the idea is for all of these actors from societies from the public bodies until uh private initiatives and social organizations uh involved in the alliance in our country such as our colleagues in Australia already have, because they understand that science in Australia is a business and it can be uh, ethically done and be very much proactive in turning these private resources in public interest, social interest, oportunidade na assinatura, que é um grande passo para o desenvolvimento da aliança, o memorando que iremos assinar hoje. Muito obrigado a todos pela atenção e um bom dia. E fiquem salvos e seguros. Obrigado, obrigado, presidente. Então, deixo uma palavra para o presidente Jordi, para mais o memorando of understanding. Por favor, presidente. Como nós podemos observar, né, aqui está uma outra grande oportunidade de cooperação, de colaboração entre Brasil e Austrália e entre estados brasileiros também. Então, com a assinatura deste memorando de entendimento entre o CONFAP e a Associação Aliança Tropical de Pesquisa da Água, né, presidida pelo professor José Francisco Gonçalves Júnior, nós estaremos criando o mecanismo, criando instrumentos que vão dar amparo a essas colaborações. Então, nesse momento, eu estou fazendo a assinatura do memorando de entendimento. Aqui está, então, o memorando assinado. Temos... Né, Muito obrigado, professor. Aqui da assinatura do memorando de entendimento. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado, Muito e mais uma dia. vez, parabéns, congratulations. E vamos deixar então a palavra para o vice-presidente sênior da Global Health Strategies, da Fundação Bill e Melinda Gates, Alexandre Menezes. Por favor, senhor Menezes, the floor is yours. Muito obrigado. É, queria agradecer a oportunidade de estar aqui mais uma vez é, com os é, amigos da CONFAP, das diferentes FAPs com as quais nós colaboramos já há bastante tempo. Vou partilhar a minha tela. Um minuto. Só um minuto. Então, eu gostaria de falar um pouquinho sobre o projeto Grand Challenges Explorations, que é um programa é, da Fundação Bimelinda Gates. É, eu sou consultor da Fundação no Brasil e represento a Fundação é, perante a CONFAP nessa parceria e também com os outros parceiros com os quais colaboramos né, nesse projeto. É, o Grand Challenges é é um sistema de financiamento baseado em desafios, em, em questões é, centrais, científicas, que têm impacto na saúde, na agricultura e no desenvolvimento, 
e é, que lança perguntas para a comunidade científica, buscando soluções inovadoras. É, nós temos dois MOUs já assinados com a, com a, com a CONFAP, né, um em 2011, que iniciou a parceria, e outro em 2017, renovando essa parceria que está vigente até esse momento. É, desde então, nós tivemos 52 projetos aprovados, é, e vários deles nos últimos anos, eu vou falar um pouquinho desse projeto, né? desse processo. É, nós tivemos 15 projetos selecionados nas rodadas globais, ou seja, projetos que competiram é, em rodadas que aconteciam bianualmente, é, em que havia concorrência com todos é, os países do mundo, em que havia é, é, pesquisadores brasileiros enviaram suas propostas, e dessas é, 15 projetos nacionais foram selecionados, vários deles receberam apoio das FAPs é, nos respectivos estados. Né? É, um, é, um, é um mecanismo de cooperação que parte é, do pressuposto de que vai... É, a, a partir um... that is also based on the idea that once a project is approved by us, it must also be supported by their own uh, uh, research support foundation in each state. So we launched this first GC in Brazil, which dealt with uh, antimicrobial resistance. It was launched in 2018. Many of these projects are reaching the end now with very interesting results. And uh, many of them, uh, we uh, have already been presented uh, last week, for example. Uh, some of them were presented at a seminar with the Ministry of Health, and uh, they might lead to changes in national public policy in the area of health. Uh, we also launched in 2018 another uh, GC in the area of data science, uh, uh, which aimed to analyze administrative data in other words, existing data banks that might generate new solutions for public health, in particular, the area of maternal and uh, child uh, health. And again, it's another yet very important collaboration between the Gates Foundation and the Ministry of Health in Brazil through uh, CONFAP and other uh, research uh, support foundations in Brazil. This was a very, very successful uh, project in 2018. And throughout this year, we designed a second uh, edition of this call in which we launched, oh, sorry, we received 233 proposals. We selected 12 projects out of these 233. Once again, working together with Ministry of Health and CNPQ and the different FAPs and uh, the results were published on uh, the 1st of December, and we do not yet have details on the projects that were selected, but we are very excited because the first round generated very interesting results. I'll just mention two projects here that are, you know, uh, very good examples of the type of insight that were generated by this type of uh, col collaboration. One was a project led by Professor Gilberto Kak from UFRJ, which uh, was uh, uh, a research on the uh, gestational weight curve. So these new parameters that might also be adopted by the Brazilian Unified Health System, uh, they are based on a very wide uh, uh, aggregate data bank based on a number of studies around the country. And that presents a much uh, more uh, 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 an overview that's much more uh, adapted to Brazilian reality. And the second of these projects is uh, one led by the University of Brasilia, Professor Muriel Hubert, which uh, analyzes uh, this uh, index of uh, early childhood uh, information including a number of different government departments, the Ministry for Citizens' Rights, the Minister, Ministry for Education. And by bringing together all these aggregate data, we can therefore rank different municipalities according to the quality of attention that they give to early childhood policies. So this is just to give an idea of the kind of research that was developed during the first round of uh, that GC. We have three ongoing rounds at the moment. Uh, they're, you know, they're open to Brazilian researchers as well. 
and that they are very attractive or they promote uh, cooperation, especially with uh, African countries. So we could have uh, Brazilian researchers as uh, proposers or proponents of these uh, studies, but they could be working together with African uh, researchers. Uh, the first call uh, deals with malaria. So it's, uh, it's focused on uh, circulating malaria uh, molecular uh, surveillance. And we have another two calls that are open. One that's uh, focused on uh, maternal nutrition and the other one is uh, focused on uh, smart agricultural innovation. One closes on the 6th of January and the other one closes on the 25th of February 2021. So I'd like to thank you very much once again for this opportunity to uh, present here uh, to all the organizers, uh, in particular, uh, for all this partnership and all the years of collaboration, all the years we've been working together. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and I'd like to invite our next speaker, who is Brian Timothy, who is uh, a scientific or science manager of uh, the Swiss National Science Foundation. Thank Mr. you very Ryan much. Ryan Timothy. Yes, thank you very much. I tried to uh, share my screen. I hope that's going to work. OK, I hope you, you see that. So uh, first of all, I would also like to thank uh, the CONFAPI for this kind invitation to join this very interesting uh, event today. Um, so I prepared some slides uh, for the collaboration we have uh, with Brazil in, in general. And as I already mentioned, I represent the Swiss National Science Foundation, which is uh, the largest uh, funding organization that supports basic research in Switzerland. Um, so next slide, I just a second. I guess you, you cannot see the second slide, can you? No, actually you cannot see. Let's see if... Uh, and now it should work, no? Perfect, now yes, perfect. Right, um, so as already mentioned, we have um, an ongoing collaboration with Brazil and basically we support uh, joint research projects between researchers based in Switzerland and researchers based uh, in Brazil. Uh, in principle, uh, this collaboration is limited to uh, three to four years. And uh, usually we have thematic calls that are restricted towards uh, the, the, the priorities of both countries. Uh, on the Swiss side, we usually support a grant with 250, up to uh, 350,000 uh, Swiss francs. And here we support a grant with uh, salaries for PhD students or postdoctoral students. Some, some funds for the consumables, travel costs, and networking um, activities. Uh, basically, we started our collaboration uh, back in 2016 uh, with the regional funding organization from Rio de Janeiro, where we had the first call for uh, joint research projects. Uh, this call was thematically focused on neglected diseases, uh, chemistry, and urban development. We received 23 uh, applications in this call and we managed to, to support uh, 12 projects. Most of the projects are already implemented and will be uh, completed uh, last year or this year. Um, the second call uh, we had with Brazil was launched um, actually in collaboration with the CNPK and also with the CONFAPI in 2018. For this, uh, we also had an MOU signed with the CONFAPI in, in April 2018. This call was uh, reduced to information communication technology and also to uh, water related to environment. So this was pretty much a special call because it was actually divided by, as I said, the CNPK and also the CONFAPI, where uh, the, the CNPK managed to support uh, eight projects. And with the kind help of the CONFAPI, we managed to find another support for four projects. So the idea was, as already mentioned, CNPK funded eight projects, while um, the 
sorry, uh, six or no, eight um, regional funding organizations agreed to support this call as well. And finally, uh, Minas Gerais support one project, Rio de Janeiro against two projects, and also Espiritu Santo, one project. Um, last but not least, I would also like you to introduce you to the, uh, the newest collaboration we have with FAPESPI, which is the leading, uh, the lead agency agreement. This is basically um, a funding scheme that should help to simplify the collaboration, cross-border collaboration between two countries. And it's only the second non-European country we have this collaboration agreement with besides South Africa. So basically researchers from both countries, they can submit um, research proposed throughout the year twice, um, and there are no thematical restrictions. Uh, the lead is taken care of uh, one year, it's the SNSF, and the other year, it's the FAPESB, uh, who is uh, the responsible um, organization. As already said, it helps to facilitate the, um, the research mission between the researchers based in Switzerland and the state of Sao Paulo. Yes, so once again, I would like to, to thank you for the opportunity to share this um, meeting today. And also would uh, like to extend my gratitude to the organization of CAMFAPI, which is a very, we have this very good ongoing collaboration with, and we're very much looking forward to extend our collaboration also in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So let's continue. Uh, with your next, uh, well, let's continue then with our next uh, presenter, who is uh, Mr. Mig Ian Miguel Venon Floristran uh, from the graduate programs of the AAD. We cannot hear you, apparently. Okay. Now you can hear me. Thank you once again for this invitation. I represent uh, the AAD, which is the German Academic Service. Uh, unfortunately, our director is not able to participate uh, in this event, uh, but he sends you all his greetings. And I'd like to extend my greetings to our colleagues uh, in Europe, but also from all over the world. Hermann couldn't participate, but he's sending his regards to all of you. I will do the same presentation in Portuguese. Well, I will be making my presentation in Portuguese for the those that uh, do not know the AAD is the German uh, Academic Exchange Service. And our objectives, our main objectives are to support uh, research uh, around the world and strengthen the academic uh, uh, network around the world uh, in the pursuit of common interests and common objectives. As you can see, we have, uh, we're present all over the world. We have offices around the world and we have uh, regional hubs as well with different uh, centers of information and knowledge. And this is the largest exchange uh, program around the world. As you can see, we're present in all five continents. Since uh, 1950, we have uh, supported more than a million and a half people, German people, to develop studies around the world. And we have also funded uh, uh, exchange students and researchers uh, from around the world. Over one million uh, foreigners uh, have uh, been uh, supported in their studies, uh, uh, masters and doctoral and postdoctoral studies. Uh, and it's also very important for us always to mention that uh, since uh, 29, I mean 2019, especially in uh, recent years, more than half of our scholars, uh, they are women, which is something very important for us, for the present and for the future. But now, uh, 
Let's just uh, move uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, yes. As uh, CONFAP and the other FAPs are participating here, we uh, uh, offer uh, complementary uh, scholarships which uh, would enable participants to uh, visit Germany and spend from two to six uh, months in Germany and have some sort of support for their studies there. And the AAD will provide them a monthly uh, uh, support, uh, financial support, including for uh, the travel expenses and for uh, uh, health uh, insurance while they're abroad. In this way, they can deepen their research projects and work together with researchers from Germany. And this is an opportunity for them to promote a further exchange and sort of a, a training uh, experience and so that they can deepen their knowledge in their specific areas of interest. Uh, just uh, and this is something similar that uh, you know the, the way that we work, for example, with uh, FAPESPI and other organizations in Brazil. And uh, Finally, I'd like, just like to let uh, my uh, contact details here with you. If you have any doubt, if you'd like to hear more uh, about uh, what we do, what the AD can do for you, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, at any time. I can provide you more information on our programs and uh, what uh, areas that we can work together. Please uh, get in touch with us. And I'd like to thank you, Gostaria. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Uh, well, thank you once again. I'd like to invite now the next speaker to speak, uh, Mr. Fabio Naro, scientific uh, counselor of the Italian Embassy in Brazil. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for this invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to talk about scientific cooperation between Italy and Brazil. It's, uh, we have a very strong relationship. For example, Brazil is the fourth uh, uh, partner in the world in terms of academic agreements with Italy. And uh, uh, our relationship and scientific cooperation between Brazil and Italy is uh, currently I mean, it has developed significantly in the recent past with the uh, signing in July 2019 of uh, uh, this uh, agreement of, for scientific cooperation between Italy and Brazil. Uh, actually, it was an extension of an agreement that was signed in 1996. And th when we signed this MOU, that was the first step to co-fund scientific projects involving uh, the uh, ministries of foreign affairs, international cooperation, and uh, the ministry of uh, foreign affairs and international cooperation of Italy. This MOU, will last for three years and its objective is to reactivate the cooperation mechanism uh, that is already uh, provisioned uh, that was already established under the wider agreement so that we can strengthen cooperation between Italy and Brazil in the areas of science and technology which are sectors that are considered strategic for us including uh, aerospace uh, industry, renewable energies, uh, raw materials, the environment and agriculture. After signing this MOU, CONFAP and its different foundations and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs launched in uh, November 2019 a call, a public call for researchers from both countries under the scientific and technological executive program cooperation, executive cooperation program. And the goal was to fund research projects. Uh, we are having some technical difficulties here. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot hear what uh, Mr. Naru is saying. And um, this is uh, very important. Some areas are very important for international uh, research, 
such as airspace, science, uh, sustainable uh, production of uh, mineral ores, and cooperation in the area of science in general. And this gives you an idea of the range of uh, scientific collaboration between uh, both countries. And this uh, call ended in early January 2020. And everything was, uh, this whole process was somehow delayed by the pandemic, but so far we have uh, received over 200 proposals that were considered eligible for uh, funding uh, by these uh, foundations uh, in many different states in Brazil, such as Alagoas, Amazonas, the Federal District, Espirito Santo, Goiás, uh, Mato Grosso do Sul, Minas Gerais, Pará, Pernambuco, Rio de Janeiro, Santa Catarina, São Paulo, and Tocantins. And of course, the next objective is to make sure that all these foundations may be able to participate. All Brazilian uh, research foundations may also participate in this project. And uh, as I said earlier, we have received uh, 200 eligible proposals and this would uh, involve a number, a wide, very large number of uh, research centers in Italy. And we hope to uh, be able to uh, um, operationalize some of these projects in early 2021. And this is uh, proof of the uh, opportunities of all these researchers from different countries, uh, from both countries, uh, all the opportunities for collaboration between researchers from both countries. And uh, and due to the pandemic, uh, we have uh, uh, we have had to delay uh, the launch of some programs, including the uh, Confab Italy uh, uh, program on mobility. In Italy, this program is uh, run by the University of Bologna. Uh, this uh, agreement was signed in 2017, and, uh, and it was active until, uh, until recently. It, it's still active, actually, but in 2020, we have uh, interrupted it briefly because of the pandemic, but the objective is to promote mobility among uh, students in general, including uh, doctoral stud students and master students, so that they can uh, uh, visit Italy and spend some time there and uh, to continue their studies together with uh, Italian researchers. Uh, three calls uh, were launched in total and over a hundred projects were approved. And this gives you an idea of a very strong scientific connection between uh, both, both our countries, which is of course our objective. Uh, we want to expand this partnership and expand this cooperation over the next few years because uh, this will benefit both countries and this is our strategy. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Let's now uh, go to our next uh, speaker from Belgium, Julie Beaumont. She is the attaché of the scientific Alliance WBI, uh, you have the floor, madam. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you, CONFAP, for the invitation. I'm going to share my screen. Algumas palavras primeiro sobre a Valonia Bruxelas Internacional. Um, words about the WBI. It is the International Department for Valonia in Brussels. And 
I've worked at WBI in the research and innovation uh, department that has a network of scientific attaches a few years ago that has the uh, peculiarity of being a hosted in partner institutions, for example, such in the case of Sao Paulo, our role is to identify research partners, uh, financing skills, to hold workshops, technological uh, missions, prospecting activities, and also to put together some newsletters to address research priorities in Brazil as well as in Belgium. I have a colleague for the cultural and academic part. And she's a UFMG in Minas Gerais. And we also have a sister agency, which is OEX for imports and exports. They have a office in Sao Paulo. And it is interesting because they created the OWIN, which is the Open Worldwide Innovation Network, currently in operations in the US, China, and Australia, but of course, they're open to other partners and they help companies. They help innovative companies from WB and partner countries to access each other's markets, you know, from Valonie, Brussels. Now, we have the R&D partners in Valonia, Brussels. We have a network of six universities, an average of 11,500 researchers. We have a tradition of excellence and very strong cooperation with the private sector and technology transfer. We have spin-off creation. We also have a network of 19 teaching and research higher institutions, higher education institutions, uh, very similar to Senai in Brazil. And as their framework, they have Innovation Agencies Network, U for Universities and Scenario for Higher Education Institutions. Also have a 22 Research Center Network. We have six competitiveness clusters, bringing together companies of all sizes. A lot of um, SMEs also who are very important partners in the innovation sector also have a network of scientific parks with the uh, framework of the SPOW that helps foreign partners to find the right place to uh, establish themselves and we also establish partnerships with the companies and universities in an innovative environment. We have incubators in business parks and also public authorities, public agencies that are very important partners in R&D and innovation. Now in September, we signed an agreement with CONFAP and we're very happy about this because this reinforces our partnership with Brazil. This is a tool that we actually add to existing tools uh, in the area of academic research and mobility with FAPCAPS, FAPERGE, FAPESP, uh, providing individual grants. And this tool with CONFAP, we also add other programs that we have in partnership with Imbrapi and also IRANET. And this um, agreement Confab WBI agreement is going to allow us to work with researchers from all over Brazil to carry out field studies, develop joint research projects, organize joint events. And actually, we organized our first joint event two weeks ago, uh, with the recording being made available through Confab's channel addressing the priorities of the WBI partners. And in the case of the CONFAP WBI agreement, it is uh, it covers all uh, scientific areas with some more privileged areas on the side of WBI, such as competitiveness 
clusters. But these are privileged areas of life science, agricultural sciences, and agri food technologies. Engineering sciences, including logistics and aerospace. And finally, environmental and digital technologies. And it's going to allow the funding of short term missions and for doctorate and postdoctorate research of up to 12 months and up to 18 months in the case of a PhD sandwich evaluation will be done based on internationally recognized criteria and the launch of the pandemic allows will happen in the first half of next year here you have the contacts Alexandre Glufour, Institutional Aspects, and we have Julie Dumont, me for identifying of partners and uh, competencies here in Brazil, as well as in Belgium. And then for CONFAP, we have Elisa, and the program managers who will be allocated, designated by FAPs, okay? So thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Madame Dumont. We are now going to go to Mariana Vegan, who is the Newton Fund Manager from the UK Embassy. Mariana Vega, you have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Newton Fund and of the uh, track record of the fund's partnership with uh, with CONFAP. CONFAP is pretty much an inaugural uh, partner for the uh, Newton Fund 2014. And the fund is a bilateral tool for cooperation between the UK and Brazil, focusing on economic and social development. And CONFAP takes part in two pillars, the pillar of people and research and they have many different British uh, partners and we've actually published many uh, calls together. I'm a little bit nervous because my internet is uh, oscillating. I might just drop out a connection during the presentation. If that happens, do not, you know, do not take it as an offense or anything. It's just my internet. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about the research uh, links. I'm not going to be able to address all the different issues here, but I'd like to point out some cooperation mechanisms of which CONFAP was par partnering up with us in the British Council. We are in the cooperation area to support researchers in Brazil and in the UK for the area of young researchers. We also work for joint work in scientific publications and scientific language using uh, the English language as a basis and also in joint research in the areas of Zika and social innovation. If you want any more information about each of the programs, they're online uh, on the British Council uh, website and the Newton Fund website. Furthermore, last year we had a call called the Newton Fund Impact Scheme that had the goal of maximizing the impact of activities from the previous project done together with the Newton Fund. And the goal of this impact scheme was to increase the impact or bring the impact of research closer to foreign users such as vulnerable communities or the engagement through multipliers or the government, for example, the third sector and so on. At the moment, we are supporting five calls and this is one of the projects that we have ongoing for the fund at the moment. So you can... Uh, move for the next slide. But in addition to the British Council, CONFAP works 
with the academies. So we have the UK Academy, sorry, the academies of um, some the British Academy, which is an academy in the area of humanities. So within this mechanism, we have the mobility. So we have British nationals coming to Brazil and Brazilians going to the UK. And since 2018, this program, which was only done with CONFAP, is also being done with CMPQ. And we support 286 trips from British nationals coming to Brazil and um, 224 from Brazilians to the UK. We're, we're going to have a call from British uh, researchers to come to Brazil uh, very soon with this partnership. And then finally, I'd point out some of the already uh, carried out calls with the UK Research and Innovation, which is a recently created institution to encompass the old research councils in the UK. And we work to CONFAP in many different areas, such as neglected infectious diseases, healthy urban living and social science of the food, water, energy uh, nexus. Most of these calls have already finished, okay? But some of these networks, they continue to be active. And they have continued to collaborate through other initiatives at the moment. And you can now go to my last um, slide. And this is where we are as far as the scope of the fund is concerned. At the moment, we are going through a review process and starting in 2021, we should come back with information for the possibility of future partnerships at the scope of the Newton Fund in Brazil. Some of these uh, issues you'll be able to get further information on from the British Council, which I believe is the person who's going to follow me now. And I am uh, at your service uh, to answer any queries. And here is my email in case you want to get in touch. Thank you very much. Mariana, we are now in our final uh, phase of our event today. Uh, so we have last, but by no means least at all. We have Mrs. Vera Oliveira from the British Council. She is the Senior Management for Higher Education and Science. So you have the floor. Thank you very much, Carla. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank for the invitation to be here today. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Professor Odi, for the partnership. It's one of our strongest uh, partnerships, actually. That has led to a lot of results. I'm going to share my screen to show you my presentation. I ask for your patience because we know that sometimes this can lead to some kind of problem. Can you see my screen? Is that OK? Yes. Yes, we can. OK. So the British Council, as Mariana mentioned, we have many projects in Brazil. And we are a foundation linked to the British government. However, we are independent. We are not part of the government. And our mission is to strengthen cultural uh, ties. We've been in Brazil for just over 65 years, and we have a number of different projects in higher education in science. And today, I am bringing to you a little bit of what we've been developing, some of the results that we've got, which includes the Newton Fund also, but also we'll touch on some of the things that I've got that we've planned for 2021. I'm going to address some of the possible partnerships that we've got with uh, CONFAPS, the British Council. We are one of the biggest implementers of the Newton Fund. Probably, yeah, I think we are the biggest Newton Fund partner in the UK. And we've worked with the Newton Fund in Brazil since 2014. I'll bring to you some projects that were supported as a result of this partnership with CONFAP for over six years. So up until today, we have held a number of workshops that have um, led to links being set up for researchers at the start of their career. We have the Research Connect Research Links. They supported uh, researchers at the start of their career and also their training with a goal of increasing the number of scientific articles being published having a higher Brazilian presence in international journals. We 
also developed institutional links projects and impact scheme projects that were more focused on research projects and this impact scheme, which was actually released last year and had the goal of taking projects that had already been done within the Newton Fund in Brazil or concluded. So they were about to finish or had already been finished and take them to the next level to work on how this could actually generate social economic impact for the country. So we had five proposals that uh, were approved in the impact scheme and these projects are actually being developed and should probably finish in the next two years. So this Newton Fund, we have this track record in Brazil, which is very interesting uh, in Brazil. And we believe that it would be interesting for us to have a narrative of what the Newton Fund was in Brazil. What were the results? And British Council has been looking at this theme or how can we bring together the results of the research which is actually being done in the country, the work, the, the projects that we've been working with and actually communicate it to a bigger audience. And as a result, one of the projects that we've done this year is we selected 22 projects and then these projects leaders, they took part in a number of workshops where we had the idea of how can we translate the scientific results to different audiences. So the idea is how does the researcher manage to communicate their results and their impacts in a simpler type of language? How can I actually communicate this to different audiences? Because the idea is for us to bring together the information more and more to have um, scientific basis when public uh, policies are developed and public decisions are made. So we are putting this uh, material together, a series of one pages, we have videos, we have recordings. So I have two examples here. For example, one of them that we are going to have a webinar talking about this uh, during the week, uh, which is a work that we've done. This is a project in the Amazon with renewable uh, energies being used in Riverside uh, community. So this is a project that we've been doing a link to this. We've done an evaluation of a master's program in 2017, 2018. We had a master's uh, program for groups sub-represented in science. This was done in partnership with CONFAP. And with this program, we sent three students to the uh, UK to do a one year master's degree. So they've just come back. So now we are following their story after the uh, master's degree. And then after this conversation that we had with them, the study that we did with these participants and based on the conversation that we have with these uh, participants at the end of October, we are now designing together with the FABS a training program because the idea is to work with these three young people and develop mentorship, for example, for them to develop in their career. So these are some of the projects that we've been doing within the Newton Fund, and we've been trying to strengthen an impact narrative and this issue of how do we communicate science, you know, having this as part of the agenda, because this is reflected in other projects that we've got within the British Council, where we have very fruitful partnership with CONFAP. One of the projects is the Fame Lab. For those of you who don't know this, the Fame Lab is the biggest scientific publication um, contest. So they have the goal of the participants to work with the three C's in order for them to explain scientific concepts. So these are researches that the investors are making and how can they communicate this to a wider audience so concepts like gravity or vaccine. It's a very sort of broad uh, uh, concepts in Brazil. We've been holding this since 2016. So we are going to the fourth edition of Fame Lab in Brazil. And this was also a special edition because this was the first time that we had it on TV. So we did a partnership with uh, Couture TV and it was aired in November, the Fame Lab Brazil final. And the first time we had a girl win. Gabriela, who was not just the Brazilian winner, but also had a Brazilian win in the Fame Lab of the global level. She won the global Fame Lab with over 7,000 people from 30 different countries voting for her. So this is a very positive result in Fame Lab. 
addresses this issue of how do we communicate science. Another program that we've got within the British Council is not just diversity in science, it's women in science, because the women in science is a program that we've been working with since 2018. And in the recent years we've been working with, we work with six pillars because it is an interest of incentivizing girls who are in school, uh, you know, uh, children, uh, adolescents, for them to get interests in science and technology. And we do work, which is the performance of women who are already uh, early career researchers are starting their masters or something like that for them to develop their skills for them to be able to face the challenges and have a very successful career in this area and also the acknowledgement for uh, women who are already leaders in this area so we have the, for the creation of networks for example and some of the projects that we bring to you that we're going to release this month and next year so probably january to march next year but one of the initiatives is a master's uh, scholarship and it will completely fund it will be completely funded by the british council we're going to offer 90 scholarships for a one-year master's degree in the uk covering all uh, academic fees living fees and these 90 scholarships are for some regions that have been selected and the and latin american is one of them and brazil is considered one of the countries with the highest number of scholarships allocated we thought that for latin america would be 35 so it's a considerable significant number of scholarships coming to brazil so i had two phases as i actually mentioned um in the slide first we select the universities because they're the ones who are going to offer at least five master's degree scholarship but between today and january we're going to release the calls for proposals which will be uh, released by the universities for us to be able to select the scholarship holders. We want to publicize this once this is actually up to have the support of universities and fabs to publicize this to girls in order for us to have a great number of applicants because we do think that it's a very important initiative. We'd like to disseminate it a lot. Another uh, initiative that we've got in Brazil is yeah, we are creating a journey of learning. So we've uh, conducted some courses with the support from CONFAB last year was Women in Science and Innovation, which was to help women to be entrepreneurs in their area to try and understand how research can become innovation, can turn into a product, how you can work on this under this entrepreneurial perspective. And we decided that based on the experience that we would also have a module-based course for researching females, entrepreneurial entrepreneurs who are women. So we thought about uh, these discussions online and this course is going to be offered to institutions. So March next year, we're going to open a call for proposal for those who are interested in implementing this course, which is completely free of charge for them to apply. And once they've applied for this course, they need to understand who their target audience is, what modules are they interested in. Some modules are compulsory, the others are optional. And we are very much interested in having institutions taking part in this initiative. And then we'll also have a call for proposal next year in March which is for the funding of extension projects. So the idea is to fund 10 to 15 extension projects through universities, through research institutions, museums, so that they may bring higher education closer to the girls who are in basic education. The idea is that not only are we going to fund these uh, projects, we're talking about small uh, uh, funding levels of up to 8,000 reais, but then this funding would come hand in hand with a training course for us to be able to move forward. And then finally, I think I've overran my time a little bit, but uh, a last uh, uh, theme, this is almost a spoiler really, but this is an announcement which is going to be made this afternoon that we're going to have the participation of Professor O.D. with us, but we are going to announce today a call for proposal for a linguistic policies in internationalization uh, through British Council. And this is going to be done for the Higher Education Secretariat and CONFAP, which are our partners. So this call for proposal will be released in January. It's going to be released today in the state of Minas Gerais, where the idea is for us to offer capacity building to higher education institutions for international cooperation programs. So this is 
uh, program for the implementation of internationalization strategies. And we have the support of Raquara Foundation in Paraná, FAPEAM, in Amazonas, FAPEC, Goiás, FAPEC, Rio Grande do Sul, FAP in Rio de Janeiro, Speed Santo, Bahia, and in Pará. And we're very happy with this uptake from the FAPs to take part in this project, which makes us very proud. And finally, the British Council releases Research Links Challenge Grant. And this is uh, something totally funded by the British Council, which is a call for proposal aimed at climate change. So we had seven applications from Brazil. And this was very positive in the ideas for these projects to bring researchers closer together. But we're going to have resources allocated for a prizes for research. So these are some of the initiatives. And thank you very much, Professor O'D and the other participants and our attendees here today for opening this space. And we're very much interested in continuing to have these partnerships and continue to promote higher education, research, and strengthening the ties between Brazil and the UK. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Oliveira. And now I'd like to invite Mr. Alexandre Zucolo. Bahaga de Andrade, who is head of international cooperation at FINEPI, who will talk about uh, the international cooperation actions and initiatives fostered by FINEPI. Bom, muito obrigado. Só um momento aqui que eu vou. Well, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll start uh, sharing my screen in a moment. Bom, acho que Quando o senhor coloca a tela, well, eu aproveito. While uh, you doing that, I will take this opportunity to mention that we will uh, be discussing some international cooperation initiatives uh, by FINAPI, reminding everyone that the European Union has signed a cooperation agreement between BU, FINAPI, and CONFAPI, and CNPQ, which is an agreement under the Horizon 2020 uh, mechanism, which uh, is now going to link to uh, the program uh, Horizon Europe. Let's see if... Uh, we're now ready for the presentation. Yes, I believe that you can now see my screen. And uh, I'd like to thank you for this uh, opportunity and for, I mean, for your introduction of what I am going to discuss here in my presentation, because this is exactly the focus of my presentation, which is the progress of the cooperation between FINEPI and the EU. And for the benefit of our European colleagues who are following us, uh, since uh, our uh, Brazilian colleagues already know a little more about FINEPI, so I'll be making my presentation in English for the benefit of our European colleagues. And I'll try to be as brief as possible. Uh, mostly because uh, competition, uh, the, the competition among the companies and 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 the division of uh, work uh, among countries also is changing rapidly, and we need a global solution for global issues, uh, and we do exchange in. Uh, we try to exchange uh, experience and knowledge as much as we can. Okay, I will just uh, pass that. Uh, uh, FINEP's uh, international cooperation, uh, we are basically uh, learning a lot in the last uh, few years. We, we started uh, 
we started uh, doing bilateral calls the first bilateral memorandums of understanding with several uh, agencies from other countries most of them from the european union i, I will show them uh, uh, soon but i would say that uh, the joint uh, the joint projects was the the last thing that we actually did we did the uh, exchange of best practices we did uh, uh, we did capacity building joint events and uh, uh, finally, we were able to to do joint uh, science and uh, technology and innovation projects uh, in joint calls. Uh, this uh, I will not comment uh, a lot. Uh, I am really uh, trying to, to, to be as fast as I can. Uh, but uh, it's a slide to show uh, the kind of projects that uh, we are interested in the, in the cooperation when we engage in joint calls. Okay. Well, our partners, uh, we in the in the European Union. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, we did either. Uh, bilateral calls or we were together in uh, Eureka Eurostar call with each one of those partners so we we had a, a let's say a fast learning track and uh, we are still trying to improve and to to find better ways to to be less bureaucratic in our cooperations and it's our uh, uh, interest to to increase this uh, this cooperation uh, as much as we can well this is uh, basically for uh, our colleagues that uh, don't know exactly the the role of FINAP in the in the financial uh, system for science and technology in Brazil. Uh, I'd say that the Ministry of Science and Technology mostly have uh, two, uh, two financial agencies, the CNPq that already spoke, that is mostly aimed at, uh, at uh, infrastructure and uh, individual uh, researcher and FINEP is uh, is the institution from the Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation that uh, that is aimed at institution we do not provide support to individual research we so, part, so we provide support for uh, every all you are thinking that seeing there from uh, research infrastructure to 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 try to improve through innovation the competitiveness of uh, uh, even uh, even the big companies not just a startup or things like that um, we are also very proud to be among the first part international partners of tafti uh, that is the the innovation network of uh, the, the network of uh, innovation agencies in uh, in Europe. Uh, in 2014, uh, FINEP and the Korean uh, agency were the two non -Euro the two first non-European uh, agencies to be partner of uh, of TAFG. and we we are now engaged in, in one of their uh, uh, work uh, work package let's say one, one work group uh, we were also partner with the european union in the in cobra project that means increases the cooperation between brazil and the european union is was a project mostly 
uh, you see the other Brazilian partners uh, in, in European as well, uh, but it was mostly uh, to to engage uh, with the general public uh, in Brazil to 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 show the possibilities of uh, cooperation with the European Union. It was a very successful project. Um, well. We also uh, are discussing how to better work with two GPS, uh, the, the urban Europe and the more year better lives. We, we took part in, in the consortium uh, era mean two for two years and we uh, will also uh, be part of the consortium era mean three. Uh, that uh, that one will be already in the framework of the, of the Horizon Europe, and well, uh, we we took part at the uh, Eureka Global Stars Brazil uh, 2018. So uh, we have uh, that. Those are just to say to, to show that uh, we have a. Uh, uh, big engagement with the European Union and 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 with uh, individuals, uh, European state members, and I would say without doubt that uh, the, the European countries are are our main partners in the, in the international cooperation. Uh, uh, just to go to the to the final slide, uh, as I said, we learned a lot from uh, recent experiences. Uh, it was uh, it was hard some time for us for our colleagues, but uh, it was a steep uh, learning curve. Uh, we are committed to to improve it even more, and. Uh, uh, at last, the, 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 the last thing is uh, we would like very much to, to be able to, to be part of the program uh, Horizon Europe uh, from the planning phase of their actions. Uh, because uh, uh, at uh, we, we were part in projects uh, from uh, horizon uh, 2020 but uh, we believe that to 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 have a more successful uh, let's say set of joint calls uh, the sooner we engage the better uh, that is uh, that's uh, that's my final words for that for 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 our european colleagues and uh, I would like to say that uh, we are looking forward to keep uh, working together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado, Sr. Zucolo. Então, vamos encerrando nosso evento de hoje, nosso fórum. Thank you very much, Mr. Zucolo. And now we are reaching the end of our international forum on international cooperation in research and development. And I'd like to invite uh, Professor, uh, Professor Odi de la Cozinha, who is the chairman of uh, CONFAPI and the ambassador of the European Union, Ibanez, uh, Dr. Ibanez. And I'd like to uh, invite uh, the chairman of CONFAP and the ambassador of the EU would like to invite them to say some final words before we take our final group picture of everyone participating here today. Well, thank you very much. I'd like to say a few words to close this event. I think uh, it was clear to everyone, you know, the wide range of international cooperation that we are engaged in, 
I've been, I mean, I'm very happy with the outcome of this event. I think this is the largest international forum that CONFAP has attended as an organization. And I think we have given uh, the different chairs of our different FAPs an opportunity to see this wider international uh, picture and so that they can identify uh, cooperation opportunities. I'd like to thank uh, Ambassador uh, Ignacio Ibanez uh, for uh, his uh, presence here during the whole event. This uh, is very important for us to to feel uh, uh, that uh, you attach that much importance to our cooperation. And we believe that cooperation between Brazil and the EU is going very well. Thank you very much. And we have seen a number of opportunities to expand the, this cooperation, uh, not only in terms of uh, different areas of knowledge, but also different uh, uh, geographical areas. And this will enable uh, and facilitate further internationalization of Brazilian research and uh, production of knowledge in Brazil. And I'd like to thank uh, Elisa and Flavia in particular, uh, who are here today, who work at CONFAP and they work with us in uh, these exchanges with international uh, uh, research and innovation agencies, and they work tirelessly. And uh, I, I am sure that we will uh, reap very good fruit in the future of this international cooperation. I'd like to thank the whole technical team who have been supporting us uh, during this event, all our supporters, and I'd like to now invite, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Ambassador Ibanez to uh, share his final thoughts with us. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Odi. I think uh, we had initially planned a two hour session and it's taken almost twice as long, but I think it, it, it's been a great event. I think it was a great idea for of uh, CONFAP to uh, start by inviting all previous uh, chairs to join us because, you know, if we're here today, it's because of something they started doing uh, a while ago. And also, uh, Professor uh, de Lagostin, I think your leadership and, of course, with all the support of the different FAPs, I think your leadership uh, has been very important. And I think this event is a clear evidence of that. I think uh, it was a great uh, opportunity to showcase what we are doing already, but also uh, share some ideas of what we can do in the future together. And I think this is the best uh, of uh, two worlds. When you're talking about cooperation, and especially about cooperation between Brazil and the EU, we have a very strong uh, past supporting us, but we have an even brighter future ahead of us. And uh, I think from um, based on that perspective, you can count on uh, our support and partnership. And I think it was very important, also very interesting to hear, you know, the words of our partners, of individual uh, member states, uh, in, uh, in the European Union, but also from Australia. So, because it's important to remind us, you know, keep reminding us that we are uh, a number of, uh, we are a union, we're a number of different uh, partners, including the UK, who until very recently, they were part of the EU and now we are partners in a wider sense. Uh, they have decided to leave the EU, but they're still our partners. And I'd like to thank uh, the whole team at CONFAPI, Elisa, Flavia, and everyone that has worked so hard to make sure that this happened. On the side of the EU, I'd like to uh, say my personal thank you to Laura Maragno, and who is now in charge of this cooperation, and also uh, Zurita, who has had such an important role to play in this uh, cooperation, and also everyone else that helped to organize this event. And uh, uh, also, I'd like to thank you, Carla, for having been with us the whole time and also being able to respond to these technical challenges, you know, and everything that, you know, when we're dealing with this virtual world, not everything is always perfect. So thank you very much 
to everyone that uh, is still here today. And I think it was a great opportunity to showcase our very strong cooperation between the EU and Brazil. And I hope to keep working in the future to make sure that our cooperation gets even stronger. And it's some, this is something so important for our future to be able to reflect on the challenges that affect us all, especially when talking about uh, sustainable development and all these different ideas that are so important to the whole world. And I think the EU and Brazil have a lot to do together. Thank you very much to all of you. It was a great pleasure to be able to spend this morning with you. Thank you very much once again. Well, thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, I'd like to also uh, express my personal thank you to Elisa and Flava. And I'd like to invite everyone to please uh, turn on their cameras for us to take a final group picture uh, with everyone together. Unfortunately, due to this uh, delay in our program today, some participants had to leave a bit earlier, but we're still, most of us are still here. So I'd like to invite everyone to please turn on uh, their webcams so that we can take this final group picture before we close the event. And I'd like to ask our technical team to confirm uh, uh, that they are ready and uh, they have uh, taken the photograph. So if we are all ready, I'd like to ask our technical team to please confirm that they have taken the photograph. Let me check if it's all right. Yes, we have taken the picture. So once again, thank you very much to everyone that has attended this event today. Thank you very much also to our sponsors, uh, the EU delegation. I think it's been a very successful event. I wish you uh, very merry seasons. Uh